by the city. Uh, at the behest and urging of a particular individual who's mentioned uh, all through the articles, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to dignify him by mentioning his name. And I do want to make very clear, since I'm sure that he's monitoring right as we speak, that uh, that's the only reason that he's not being mentioned on this program today, because this very clearly is a legitimate news story, okay? Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't uh, dignify his ego by mentioning it. Okay. But anyway, the Hallandale City Commission is added again, and two years ago, and of course, I guess we got a lot of new listeners and people who were not involved with us during the sweet and low days. Sure. Uh, we went through this whole same business with Hallandale a couple of years ago, and the problem, the thing that really got to them the most was the fact that it was true. That's what bothered them. And I listened to a lot of the calls. I got so many things that I want to talk about to clarify, because I listened to a lot of these old farts who called in Steve yesterday. There must have been five or six of them. Oh, yes, we got to get him off the air. He offends people. Well, I got news for you. Uh, any talk show host in America worth his weight in salt offends some people, okay? In fact, there are some of them who offend a lot of people. That's not a criterion for someone being on the air or not being on the air. Uh, there are people in this town, past and present, extreme right-wingers, who, who constantly make these grotesque, there's that word again, comments <laughs> about liberals, for example. And I mean the worst kind of generalizations and go on and on and spew the worst hate. And I find it offensive, but that doesn't mean I think they ought to be off the air. Okay, see, that's the difference. So because something is offensive... Uh, there's a real remedy to that, and that is you don't have to listen to it. I'm sure there are a lot of black people who think that the Jeffersons is offensive because George Jefferson basically in that show is a fairly well-to-do, pretty well-to-do, step and fetch it. Mm -hmm. That's all he is. He's a, one of the worst stereotypes. I happen to find the show funny, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I happen to like the show. But I know at the same time that I'm sure that it offends some people. That's life, okay? That's This is the kind of thing that happens when you have the free marketplace in exchange of ideas like we do in this country. That's the whole basis of what this country is all about. And what really shocks me is when I hear some of these elderly... There was one guy called in using a couple of Yiddish expressions the other day, just like Mayor Rosenberg over there in Hallandale, who's supposed to be this liberal Democrat, and of course two years ago called me the flaming Fagala. You'll recall that mm -hmm. wonderful uh, bigoted remark of his. You know, you see, these people evidently have short memories. And for someone who's supposed to be a liberal Jew to be spewing that kind of bigotry and have that kind of narrow-mindedness really is, is frightening. Mm -hmm. I guess very, very short memories. But anyway, so, you know, if there are elderly people who are offended by the fact that we tell the truth on this show. And, you know, how many disclaimers do I do on this show? <laughs> how many, so many disclaimers to the point of nausea yeah. about saying, hey, you don't have to be chronologically old to be an old fart mentally. In fact, just yesterday, by coincidence, mm -hmm. we had some young wacko, some pinhead, and I said, there's living proof yeah. that age doesn't you know, determine whether you're an old fart. It's a mental state of mind. You can be 20 and be an old fart. You can be 95, like this 81-year-old lady who called before, yeah. and like some of the elderly people who called Steve mm -hmm. yesterday, who love what we do on these shows, okay? Right. Because they got a sense of humor, and also because they know that there's a lot of truth in what we say. Of course. About a lot of this horrendous behavior that goes on in this town. And really, and I'm going to tell you one thing right up front at the beginning of the show. You will never, ever hear me retract or apologize for any comments I've said about this so-called senior citizen syndrome. And I also heard some of these uh, pseudo-intellectual callers, there were two or three of them calling yesterday, and they just seize upon this. These are people who hate my guts anyway, and they seize upon this kind of opportunity to jump on the bandwagon. And, oh, yes, about how I malign these uh, people and how I make them feel bad and how I encourage young people to go out and call them douchebags, etc., and so on. Oh, yeah. I got news for you. Long before Neil Rogers ever came to this community, there was a gen there was a age gap here that was so incredible that it was mind-boggling. And long after I'm dead and buried, unfortunately, I'll probably still be here. Long before I came here, we had the early bird specials and the adult-only communities and all of this whole condo mentality. So don't put the onus on me. All I've done is tell you the truth, okay, and describe it, and describe what it's done to the image of this community, which is a nightmare. When I first came to KAT, I remember I lived on the beach, and I can remember driving on Ocean Drive and Collins Avenue and seeing all those... Elderly people sitting in those chairs, staring at the sidewalk, waiting to die. Mm -hmm. Which is when I first came up with that term, outdoor funeral parlor. I didn't invent it. I just told it to you. So here's another case where the city of Hallandale doesn't like the message 
because it hits too close to home. So let's go after the messenger. Let's attack Neil Rogers again because, after all, we're P.O.'d. He made us look stupid two years ago. And some convoluted logic, they assume, Mr. Rosenberg who tries to run that commission over there like a little dictator, Mr. Rosenberg thinks that some, the outcome is going to be different. <laughs> I mean, Sonny, baby, you're in for a big surprise. Because it ain't no different now than it was before. But I'm glad to see that they have no crime in Hallandale, that they have no more jaywalking problem, that they have no drug problem, that they have no uh, poor people living west of the railroad tracks, that they don't have any problems over there, and that they have the luxury of giving an individual 40 to 45 minutes of time Unheard to of. play tape recordings taken out of context and edited by the individual to come to a particular point, okay, that would make Sonny happy and uh, give them all the ammunition to come up with this resolution. Unbelievable. They have a Just lot incredible. Of, they have a lot of time, obviously. A lot of impotent business going on <laughs> over there at Hallandale. Okay, it's 10.13 at WIOD. I want to tell you that I... They're two Miami cops with a hot new beat. They're on the streets fighting crime. Hey, Pops, that's a handicapped face there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Hallandale Vice. We got a problem. The Grey Gang is up to their old tricks. Lieutenant, isn't that the group of senior citizens who went around trying to get the early bird special after seven? Yeah, they're back in town. Let's go get them. They'll stop at nothing to clean up the streets. Hey, lady, you can't cross here. You'll have to cross in the light. And they're determined to clean up the smuggling business. All right, sister, you're under arrest. Oh, so now you're arresting my wife. What's the charge? Possession of powder. Open that purse, Tub. Let's see that white stuff. Yeah, just a thought. She's got over a hundred bags in here. Of what? Sweet and low. From that restaurant she just came out of. Let's take them in. Yes, there come the hit Miami Cops on a hot new beat in Hallandale Vice. Premiering this fall on MBZ. Get him off the air. Get him off the air now. He's attacking us. <laughs> I wonder if Sonny Rosenberg has any sweet and low in his house, okay? Just curious about that, Sonny. You know what we ought to do? We ought to call the people at Sweet and Low. Remember a couple of years ago when sure. this thing was in high gear and it made papers all over the world, as a matter of fact, including the Philippines and China, which we mentioned yesterday. Uh, the, the people in New York at the Sweet and Low company got wind of it, and they, they put together mm -hmm. thousands of packages of Sweet and Low, and on one side it said, stolen from the home of Neil Rogers, <laughs> which I thought was sensational. Maybe we ought to have them print some up that say, stolen from the home of Sonny Rosenberg. Now, there's an okay? idea. So then Sonny could at least feel honored and recognized when these people, you know, stuff the Sweet and Low in their bags. It'll be like a little campaign plug for Sonny <laughs> over there in Hallandale, okay? Maybe that might get him off our back. Anyway, I just want to make a few comments about this individual who, and I notice in his article, which is hysterical, talk about the pot calling the kettle black. The individual who spurred this yesterday claims that I've harassed him on the air for the past 18 months. I've harassed him on the air. Are you following that? I must for have the missed past 18 that. months. I didn't hear that. Now, do you think maybe that's a misprint? They've got that backwards? Oh, must be. Because for the past, it's 19 months now, I've been subjected to a campaign of harassment the likes of which you could never imagine. Steve talked about it yesterday, and there's no sense in repeating the whole thing. Sponsors being called, and not, not just... See, you've got to write out there, if you don't like any show, you've got a right to write a letter and say to Joe Blow's clothing store, hey, I don't like Neil Rogers, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to buy any clothing in your store as long as you advertise on his show because I don't like him. You've got a right to do that. You don't have a right to call people, call them at home, and call them at home, and call them at home at weird hours and abuse them and things of that nature. You just don't have a right to do that. Nobody has a right to do that. Just as nobody has a right to tell us what we can say and what we can do on the air, except the government. You know, the commission has got the ability to make certain restrictions, which we understand and are well aware of. Other than that, there's nobody out there who's got the right to dictate what can be on the air and what can't be, because that's fascism. Like I said the other day, that's like the Joseph Goebbels School of Broadcasting, where anybody out there can say, well, uh, you know, I don't like this, and I don't like that. And here's a list of, of things, a menu of what you can say and what you can't say, because I don't like this side of the menu. I don't like. Yeah. Me. I don't like. I'm the well, see, if we were going to allow that to happen, or anybody in the broadcasting industry allowed it to happen, you know what you'd hear all day? The sounds of silence. Because there wouldn't be, other than maybe a few pronouns, there wouldn't be anything we could say that somebody <laughs> somewhere wouldn't object to, okay? Now, let me ask you this. Now, no, wait a minute. I don't like that the questions, okay? Oh. I don't like questions, so cut it out. <laughs> now, They're going to take you off the air immediately. No questions. 
Well, let me give you an example. Okay. Now, no, I don't like examples either. <laughs> Let's say somebody hated David Letterman. Yeah. Despised. I bet guy. you there are those people. You sure. Know? Thought he was don't not. Don't you think funny. we ought to get him off the air? That said, he's ruining the the language I of our young people. I think we ought to go people. out and strangle a peacock myself. Terrible influence on young people. He's influencing the way they talk and the things they say. That peacock's getting pretty uh, surly lately. And anyway. then you find out that the guy tapes every single David Letterman and watches it later. What would you think of that person? I would think he had an obsession. Yeah. With David Letterman, obsession. What a life. You know what I mean? What a life he would yeah. have. And just complains about him constantly. In fact, it is interesting that there have been those very responsible individuals who have investigated and discovered that there are some people, some individuals, maybe singular, who have an obsession with this show. Yeah. Tape everyone. Shocking, isn't listen it? Listen to it later. And like Steve always says, I love that line he uses about people with rich, full lives. <laughs> Oh, but geez. when you sweep it all away, and I just I want the public to understand one thing, and especially, and I know we have a large gay audience, okay? This whole campaign that's gone on for 19 months, you take away all the window dressing about lyrics and songs and about uh, old people in Hallandale, because at Zeta, even when we took all, all the songs away, okay, mm -hmm. and we were so we were so antiseptic over there, man, it was incredible. We all had to yeah. wear white suits to come in. That's how antiseptic we were. <laughs> Even when we took it all away, the harassment never stopped. Never and the reason being that all. what this is really all about is homophobia. And of course, most of these hate letters that have been sent out, these malicious, hateful letters that have been sent out to all, anybody you can imagine, uh, including people who have nothing to do with this program, uh, the line is almost always in there somewhere about yeah. Neil Rogers trolling for sex from teenage boys on the radio. Mm -hmm. So again, just like many of the comments about the senior citizens, and I say many, here are things that are taken out of context and twisted around when they're said in obvious humor and satire. You'd have to be a moron not to understand that. But for malicious or other purposes, twist it around as if to say, well, here he goes, he's trolling for boys on the air. Okay? And you'll recall, many of you, the Adam Walsh Foundation letter... Yeah. What was his name again? I don't know. Name slips my mind. Yeah. Uh, that we read on the air here a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Which again was spurred by the same individual same taking guy. things out of context from recordings of this show and sending them out to third parties. Anyway, it's 22 past 10 at WIOD. I got a lot to say, especially about Hallandale and the city commission over there. Because the other part, the other part of this business is going to take care of itself. And as Steve said yesterday... Uh, Norman Kent, who is one of the finest attorneys I have ever met, um, has been employed by Steve and myself to deal with the legal aspects of the harassment and the other things that have gone on. And they are going to stop. Believe you me, they're going to stop. Good. Because I don't know. I've been in the business almost 30 years, and I don't know anybody in the country who has been subjected no. to the kind of uh, abusive campaign that's been going on against me and now for the last three months against Steve mm -hmm. uh, by the same individual. And it's going to stop. Believe me. Because freedom of speech is one thing. It's amazing how people are always talking about their own freedom of speech, yet they're not concerned with yours or mine or Steve's or anybody else's. And, of course, they include in freedom of speech the right to harass and intimidate and threaten. That, in their own warped minds, is freedom of speech. It's 23 past 10 at WIOD. IOD. 1026 at WIOD. By the way, yesterday, as usual, there are some interesting lies that get told along the way. For example, when I gave out the number of the Hallandale City Commission and urged people to call and protest this ridiculous resolution, which this is the second time in uh, two and a half years that they've done this. Uh, and I was very, very cautious in urging you and beseeching you, you know, no harassing calls or threatening calls, just to do it responsibly, uh, which is what I always say, by the way. And uh, a short time later, we got a message, a frantic message from Mr. Intendola saying that there were callers were tying up not only the switchboard, but the emergency lines and fire and rescue. And later on on Steve's show, we have uh, we have the Emmis, we have the true story yeah, that the 911 numbers go through Hollywood. They have nothing to do with the Hallandale switchboard, that it was just an absolute <laughs> fabrication. And every single time we do this and say, you know, act responsibly and let the public officials, these elected officials who are on the public payroll, know what you think about their actions, it's always the same excuse. Oh, Oh, they're harassing us. They're tying up the emergency line. The ba -ba 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 -ba, all this other garbage. And all it is is just another cowardly attempt. In other words, you know that guy in Hallandale that used to call and sing, he can dish it out, but he can't take it. Sure. Well, that's the case with Sonny Rosenberg and that bunch of cowards over there in the city of Hallandale. They can dish it out, but they can't take it. So when somebody tells the truth over what a bunch of jellyfish they are over there, they can't handle it. You see, Mr. Rosenberg, you're not going to dictate my free speech on the air, okay? And I'm shocked. 
Although I shouldn't be shocked because this is the guy that called me the flaming Fagel a couple of years ago on the air. And when we did our thing at the Diplomat Mall where 99% of the people who showed up were supportive of me and laughed at Mr. Intendola and Mr. Rosenberg. In the beginning, he wouldn't even shake my hand like he was going to catch some kind of disease by <laughs> shaking my hand. This great, wonderful liberal from Hallandale. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You know, before Hitler took the Jews, he took the homosexuals and the gypsies, okay? That's who he took off to, to kill in the concentration camps, Mr. Liberal Rosenberg. And your bigotry is legendary now over the last two years. It's unbelievable. That flaming Fagala whose hand he wouldn't shake. And then at the end of the show, when he saw that the overwhelming majority of the people in the mall were supportive of me, he comes over and shakes my oh, hand geez. and he's laughing like it's a big joke. Who the hell are you kidding, Sonny? Who are you kidding? And bigotry, like I said, is what this whole hate campaign against me has been for the last 19 months. All this other stuff is window dressing. That's all it is. Here's another message. An older listener offended that uh, these listeners have been termed morons by Mr. Rosenberg, insulted by the city of Hallandale. So his feelings have been hurt. Mm -hmm. But I thought we couldn't do that. <laughs> I mean, I listened to some of those suits, a couple of those guys that called in yesterday, who obviously hate me with a passion and are just seizing this opportunity to jump on the bandwagon and try to legitimize it. And, oh, yes, he, uh, you know, he hurts the feelings of the elderly, and he does. I've given more disclaimers about what we're talking about, and believe me, it's true. That's why it hit such a nerve. I remember when I started the thing with Sweet and Low in Hallandale two years ago, I expected to do one show on it. Six months later, I couldn't shut off the faucet. That's all people wanted to talk about. Yeah. woman in the New York Times magazine, in the Sunday magazine, wrote a big piece on it. Do you remember that? Sure. Yeah. About the stolen roles, mm -hmm. who may be running again this weekend at Gulfstream, by the way. But um, which is in Hallandale, by the way, in which we mention constantly. Yeah, that's another on the thing. Air. It's interesting. I, I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to get, try to get Gulfstream Park and the Don family to condemn Neil Rogers because I got a real surprise for them. Okay, Doug Don and I happen to be good friends. Gulfstream Park and I happen to have a very strong relationship that includes Roy Slanhoff and Joe Tannenbaum and uh, Bob and Bob Savage, a lot of other people over there. And I'm going to be there Sunday, doing my thing for the Community Alliance Against AIDS. I wonder what Mr. Rosenberg thinks about that. Hey. Oh. And I hope a lot of people show up. Maybe this will spur a lot of my listeners to show up on Sunday and make contributions. Yeah. Just as kind of, even if it's not from the heart for the cause, just as kind of a protest to Mr. Rosenberg and this group of Neanderthals in Hallandale. Um, but you know how many people have called us up and said they went to Gulfstream, they had never been to a horse race before? Yeah. Well, and we, don't have to, we don't have to justify it. It's just, as I've always said, unfortunate that Gulfstream geographically happens to be located in Hallandale. There's nothing they can do about that. They can't move it. You know, it's very close to the Dade Broward line there, and I'm sure that a lot of people would be happier if it were just a little south. You know? <laughs> but uh, there's nothing they can do about that. And it's not the city of Hallandale, it's this just handful of fakers on the city commission. And isn't it interesting, when Mr. Intendola was on, and I wish I would have had the opportunity, I was with some clients yesterday for 15, 20 minutes, but I wish I would have been able to be in here with Steve yeah. when he was on the phone. Yeah. I because Mr. Intendola always claims ignorance, which in his case I think is probably uh, <laughs> appropriate. Oh, he didn't know anything about it, and he hasn't got anything to do with it, blah, 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 and all this other stuff, okay? Never. I thought he was the city manager. He never votes on anything. Yeah. He never has anything to do well, with anything. Well, he's busy with that band over there, you know, doing, <laughs> them, doing them hillbilly songs. He's real busy taking care of business over in Hallandale. You know, it's really, uh, it's embarrassing because you people, you fakers over there in Hallandale, I'm not talking about the population, I'm talking about the powers that be, because I'm sure they're all listening right now. You made jackasses out of yourselves two years ago with this. I mean, absolute fools out of yourself. Now, I want to point out to the audience that this... Reading yesterday was it was this was the reading for the first time of this resolution drafted by Mr. Kane. That's not Steve Kane, Dick right. Kane, the attorney for the city of Hallandale, at Mr. Rosenberg's request. It will be read again and voted on by the city commission on February twenty first. That's two weeks from yesterday. Now that meeting takes place at noon. I guarantee you this program will be there. This show will be there in Hallandale. Two weeks from yesterday, the 21st of February. Right. And you know something? It's got to be an open meeting. Oh, sure. Open to the public. Yeah. And you know who else will be there? I bet you a lot of people who enjoy this program will be there. Yeah. So it's not going to, it can't be one of these closed door situations like they did yesterday where they invite somebody who's had an axe to grind with the show for 19 months and been trying to destroy my career and three different radio stations that I've worked on. 
and they do it in silence and secrecy, and then, of course, all of a sudden, the media are, just happened to be there. <laughs> By the way, Jim Gasser called, said he did not write that letter from, that we read yesterday about valet parking. So there's another interesting situation. Hmm. We've had a lot of mysterious letters like that, haven't we? With fictitious Tons. names of people who haven't been invented yet, and with people who didn't write the letters, etc. Huh. Yeah. He's going to be calling in before the end of the show. It says in the note. Great. Anyway, it's uh, just incredible, just amazing how this town... You know, I've often said this is the biggest Bush League town, big hick town, and this is living proof of it. I mean, this show is so tame compared... I'll give you an example. Just compared to what we did two years ago in INZ, it's oh. so tame that it's not even in the same ballpark. And certainly compared to many of the FM morning shows in this market and all over the country, this show is like uh, Alice in Wonderland by comparison. It's so tame. It's true. So if it's not some recorded material that we're playing that, you know, is a satire or a song parody, it's uh, talking about senior citizens <laughs> and joking about the doing something in a Metamucil or whatever it is, things that are said in obvious comic satire that are taken by people and purposely twisted and manipulated around to try to make it appear that we're really just awful folks who shouldn't be on the air. Because they just don't want that awful faggot on the air making all of that money. It just sticks in their craw, man. They can't stand it. They just can't handle it. It reminds me of uh, the Anita Bryant days. Hmm. We don't hate the sinner. We hate the sin. We love the sinner. <laughs> just don't say it. Get, get back like a good boy in your closet and don't say anything and we'll leave you alone. Get back and cower in your closet. And look what happened to Anita. Yeah, what goes around comes around, honey. <laughs> Pass me the orange juice, okay? Yeah. 1035 at WIOD, I want to tell you about H. More with Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610, WIOD. Okay, 1039 at WIOD. I put, I put the number on the screen, Roger. Roger just disappeared. Oh, yeah, it's on the screen. See, I'm way ahead of you. Anyway, we have a celebrity caller that we might be talking to momentarily if he is there. That's exciting, okay? A lot of people have been asking about him the last few days. Great. Anyway, uh, where was I before I was so rudely interrupted myself? Um, you know, I don't know really what more there is for me to say other than the fact that certainly the harassment campaign, letters to everybody you can imagine from Tim Robbie and Sam Jankovic and the University of Miami Hurricane and everything else about... You know, with some of the wildest accusations, and I can assure you, in fact, I have it right in my hand now, a packet of letters and material from my attorney that are the beginning of the process that's going to bring all of this foolishness to a screeching halt. Mm -hmm. And for the last two years, I've been told by corporate attorneys and all kind of other attorneys, well, uh, ignore it, don't dignify it, let it go away. It doesn't go away. And the irony of the whole thing is that back during the election for Dade State Attorney back last November and prior to it, uh, all of these complaints were made against me, and he's this, and he does that, and all this wild, weird stuff. And Janet Reno, in compliance with law, because right. she couldn't have a conflict of interest, she sent it all to the governor's office. And I was investigated by a special prosecutor appointed by the governor, and the FBI, and the uh, Secret Service, everybody except the CIA. The, you know, I, I'm probably the most investigated talk show host in America. And amazingly enough, the special prosecutor's report, part of which Steve read on the air yesterday, which I have here... Uh, not only clears me and says there's absolutely nothing there, but it says that the individual who made all the accusations, the same individual who spurred this Hallandale thing yesterday and has been conducting this hate campaign, has an obsessive hatred toward me and this show. Hmm. That was one of the many conclusions and also talks about his abhorrent behavior in regard to that debate with Janet Reno and that obnoxious oh, yeah. letter that he handed Janet Reno, the which boxes, Steve read on the air yeah. yesterday with the three boxes, <laughs> and just on and on and on. So isn't it ironic that while I was the one being investigated, that this special investigator, the special prosecutor, uh, turns around and says, hey, that Rogers didn't do anything wrong, and there's nothing wrong with the show, but that this particular individual making the allegations is the one who got a lot of problems with and has an obsessive hatred of this program and of Neil Rogers. And the public has a right to know, and it's long overdue. What do they do with all the microphones in here? Steve is here, but, um, oh, here comes Roger now. Well, they got a lot, you know, Mike has all those guests in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they have that so, uh, that cooking. His part, mom said he'd be back in a half hour. Our celebrity uh, caller here will be back, and we'll give him a call on the air. That'll be exciting. That'll Someone, be a recent local radio personality who always is good on the phone. Yeah, not always that great on the air, but good on the phone. Good phone. Kind of like from the Lee Fowler. I shouldn't say that. That would be a slap. <laughs> huh? Oh, okay. Roger just uh, gave me a confused look. Like uh, what? 
<laughs> anyway, uh, there's Steve, and Steve is sitting reading, uh, trying to control himself and be uh, calm. And... <laughs> it was a very good dinner, by the way, last night. I'm not uh, sure. Uh, if the people at Nutrisystem are listening, okay, it's just this is not going to be the week. Okay, Linda and Susan, you're wonderful folks. I'm not. The great part of it is, I really panicked this morning when I got on the scale because I thought. Oh, brother, you know that I, I ate quite a bit last night, and but I didn't gain anything, okay, which made me very happy. I'm still right there where I was at the Lanyap Cajun House. I can't mention that, can I, since it's one of your sponsors? You can, of course. And also some of the uh, help there were very interesting as well. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we don't want to get into that because it'll sound like I'm trolling for sex from boys on here, although they were all of legal age, I noticed. I was very, I'm very careful. In fact, now, even before I look at somebody, I make sure I ask. In fact, I just like... With my back to them, I say, are you over 18? If they say yes, I turn around, I look at them. If they say no, I just keep, you know, moving in the other direction. Because looking is also illegal. You do understand that, don't you? Really? I so anyway. I can't believe the, uh, I'm in shock yeah. about these statements that were made yesterday. I love this. What are you, you are a, what, a, where is Hitler? Here? The one about Hitler. The man is Hitler. a Hitler with an, uh, without an army. A self-hating homosexual, a self-hating self Jew. Jew. I mean, nothing actionable there, right? And soon I'll be a self-hating <laughs> senior citizen. Soon I'll be a self-hating senior citizen. I mean, no defamation there. No. Uh, how about this one, kind of... Steve? How about this one out of the Sun Sentinel, who claims that Rogers has harassed him on the air for the past eight months? Yeah, I've been harassing him and calling his sponsors. How about and that? Calling his friends. By well, the way, that's, that's funny. The that's part not about actionable. The, campaign, <laughs> the part about the campaign of harassment is that people who are friends of mine have also received harassing and threatening calls. Mm -hmm. Fat Rich, who comes in every Thursday and has helped us in so many ways and sent out all of those tapes, you know, those awful tapes, which this individual also said were obscene and pornographic and threatened Fat Rich because he sent him out through the mail. The Postal Service was going to investigate. We only raised $40,000 for the Camillo's house. You know, oh. one of my favorite causes in the oh, world. And yet God. this individual tried to attack that. No matter what it is that I do, uh, there is an attack made, okay, to try to twist and distort and threaten and harass. Even Fat Rich, who never would hurt a fly, one of the nicest people you'd ever meet in your life, has received numerous harassing phone calls and threats and uh, goes out to his car here and finds the car plastered with the uh, letters and messages and uh, so on and so forth, which also will stop immediately, by the way. The thing way. I, that I had to laugh o over dinner, what Norm said, that since the show yesterday, his office has been buried in calls of people who have been harassed and who have been put upon who want to, uh, yeah. you know, go on the record with it. Yeah. Uh, poor, I think poor Norm's going to have to abandon the rest of his practice. With Probably. Well, I told him when I left, he's going to have to give up the rest of that silly practice. He seems very willing to do it. Oh, yes. He seems more than uh, he's anxious very dedicated. to uh, pursue this because it's obviously a grotesque injustice, and it's a really a sick campaign that's been going on for the last couple of years. And as I've said a couple of times, you know, you can mask it as anything else. Nobody is fooling me. They might be fooling some other people in the media temporarily because they've been able, through legal manipulation, they've been able to keep this thing quiet up until now. But there can be no question that this is a legitimate news story. Yes, it's in it uh, three different uh, stories in this morning's newspapers in the Herald and Sun Sentinel. And I'm sure it's going to go far beyond that. And then you never know. There just might be some uh, imminent press conferences coming up in the very near future. Oh, I can't imagine with whom. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, where there might be a lot more information disseminated to the people in the media so they really understand what's been going on. Well, this falls into what, Steve, what you said yesterday on the air, that they do this kind of work, these kind of people, in the dark. Yeah. They don't like Hidden. when the light of day but is when the is light hits them, them, they run. They like to be able to do it, and uh, we aren't supposed to mention them or make reference to them or do this or do that. But in the meantime, they can, <laughs> they they can, can continue sending out a, thousands and yeah. thousands of letters. And get up in a public meeting and, and, and calling you a self-hating yeah. Jew. And, a, uh, <laughs> and Hitler. Yeah. But we Hitler. can't do anything. Well, yeah, I love that word grotesque, by the way. It's a <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it, it, and the, I think the reason Norm is so upset by this is because it is a, to use your word, grotesque manipulation and distortion and abuse of the legal system. Yes, yes. And that's, mm -hmm. no that's question. I think, why he... Yeah, wants see, to the average to individual, when they send a letter out and they say, well, Steve said this or Neil did that, person will look at it and they'll say, well, good luck. You know, that's Joe Schmo down the street. When somebody sends a letter out on their legal letterhead, mm -hmm. uh, that adds a tremendous amount of credibility, of course. Of course. And, and it will be uh, read, yeah. yeah. And uh, Plus, will be read. If you want to retain me, uh, you know, I'll yeah. get money for you. Which is mm -hmm. a clear violation of the legal code of ethics, in which the Florida Bar, I'm sure, is not too excited about as we speak. But uh, that's another story for another day. So, um, it, um, you know, I think probably the fact that um, Sonny Rosenberg and crew in Hallandale decided to do this 
Um, you know what they say, in every dark cloud you'll find a little silver lining. Oh, yeah. I think they probably, in the long run, will have done a tremendous service, unwittingly, not mm -hmm. by intent. Well, I think the, uh, from our conversations with Norm last night, I think the, uh, this was a turning point. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it was a misstep on the uh, part of the gentleman. Well, uh, yeah, do this because now it, it has enabled us to discuss this as a news story, which yeah. it is, and to let the public know about what's been going on, which they have a right to know. Because sure. the reason they have a right to know, I, a point I tried to make yesterday, which I think is a very important point, is that while it would appear that this all this harassment is leveled against you and I in an effort to cost us our jobs or whatever, it is really aimed at the public. Because oh, if, no question if, about if it. this individual has that, his way, you'll be gone. This, this idea, this fascistic idea that any group of individuals or a couple of people can sit down and arbitrarily determine what community standards are in a community of four million people. Well, even more specifically than that, if this individual has his way, you'll be out of Miami, I'll be out of Miami, he'll be happy, and our audiences are going to be the ones that are going to have to do the suffering. So this is really in an indirect way, now, and maybe not even so indirect, directed at them and taking away the right to listen to the shows they want to listen to. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. And, of course, if the born-again right-wingers had their way, we'd have 24 hours of Jim and Tammy Faye Baker and Paul and Jan Crotch, and uh, I don't know about Jimmy Swaggart anymore. He might not <laughs> make, he might oh, not no, make the hit parade. No, but he has changed. He is, you know, yeah. he has repented. So it sounds like... Some, I think he's feeling the change. It sounds like some people may come to our aid. It sounds like... Uh, said, well, Norm, Norm said there are about calls. 15 calls on his yeah. answering machine yeah. of people who wanted to... Well, you know, the right. interesting thing is that um, there are lots of skeletons in the closets everywhere, and people who conduct these kinds of witch hunts and campaigns generally have a history of doing similar Ooh. types of activity with folks that they don't favor, who don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, among the many people who have fallen into disfavor, including yourself, because you were Mr. Good Guy until oh, you appeared in court that day for me. And then <laughs> as soon as you say something that doesn't fall in line with this individual's uh, All of a sudden I have a horrible game show. plan, then you have a terrible Bad show, guy, and you're yeah. a troublemaker, and you're a racist, <laughs> and, uh, and a liar, of course, and everything else under the sun. <laughs> And uh, I have a feeling that there may be others who will come forward who have experienced yeah. the same kind of witch hunts and the same kind of abuse. Uh, there is something interesting, and I want to, because Norm, and as I mentioned before, is probably the sharpest attorney I've ever encountered in my life. He's just a tremendous guy and really knows his stuff. Well, we're old buddies, you know. We go way back, Norm and I. Did you used to have lunch with A.J. Dewey I over at the... I think um, Norm and I used to go to college together at FAU. He really? probably doesn't remember me, but I think... Anyway, I here is... This is the <laughs> preamble of Chapter ah. 4 of the Legal Code. Just cool it for a minute, Spencer. Relax, right on okay? time. We're doing important business in here. <laughs> What? <laughs> Shut up, Spencer. <laughs> Chapter 4, the preamble in the Legal oh, Code yeah. of Ethics, it says, Conforming to the requirements of the law in the lawyer's business and personal affairs, a lawyer should use the law's procedures only for legitimate purposes and not to harass or intimidate others. Right. That's very Don't key. you think that's very clear? Right there. It sounds think, very clear to me. I think that's uh, really And I think gist. some people should govern themselves mm -hmm. accordingly. Don't <laughs> they? Hey, Spencer! <laughs> Where the heck have you been, Spencer? <laughs> Come on here. Come on, I got some money for you. Now, did you wash my car, Spencer, or did you... Uh, boy, look at this. He's got Roger's keys. As long Man. as he's got a deal going in there, he's not, <laughs> he isn't interested. I've even got a 10 here, Spencer. I got the right change and everything. And he still hasn't come in here, has he? Where I did he go? Distracted. Spencer! There Get in he here comes. now. Here he comes. Spencer. Here, come on, Spencer. I got your uh, 10 bucks there for you. That'll probably... You can take that to Gulfstream and make it into 5000 and if I do, I'm going to give you half. Now, oh, good. That sounds good. To me. Get out there, then. you got two hours till post time. Uh, <laughs> by the way, our horses yesterday finished 11th and 7th, but yeah. that's not bad because 7 11 are two lucky numbers. So maybe you want to take that 10 over to 7 11. It might be lucky because you said it. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you do my car yet, or were you waiting for my it's money? Done. It's, it's done. Boy, yeah. that's great. Here's a guy even give, even gives me credit <laughs> for about a half an hour. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, of course, if I wouldn't have been here when Spencer came in, he would have gone out there and thrown dirt on the car to get it dirty again. <laughs> and, uh, I ain't gonna do no, I know. Okay, Spencer, thanks a lot, and get out of here already. <laughs> he drives me. Yeah. But he's my friend. I'm he's... your friend, Spencer. As long as I got those ten spots for you, I'm your buddy. Gee, he gives me credit. Does he? <laughs> I watch him, okay? He moves around a lot. Okay, Spencer, have a great life. 1051 at WIOD. And speaking of Gulfstream, we invite you to join me for a day at the races. OD. 1055 at WIOD. Okay, and when we get back after the news break, we'll start taking the calls because lines are basically full now. But, I, you know, I want to make it clear to you, and I've said this a million times, if you don't like what I do, if you don't like what Steve does, turn it off. 
And Steve had a great suggestion yesterday for the blue hairs in this town. There is a station that it... Well, there are two stations, really, that exist, <laughs> both of them owned by the same company, W. Lifeless and W.O.L.D., and they're okay. both basically for a geriatric audience. Well, life is not only for geriatrics, but also elevator music for people sitting in a doctor's office who have nothing else to do and aren't paying much attention. And W-O-L-D is basically geared, the old line talk. You know, a couple of these old farts that called Steve yesterday. Well, you've got a tremendous responsibility to us. We don't have any responsibility to any particular group. We have a responsibility to be entertaining and amusing and enjoyable and listenable to a large segment of the audience. There are 40 signals in this market, and there isn't anybody in the world that's going to please everybody. And in a major metropolitan community, one of the tremendous advantages you've got is the diverse choice of signals on radio and in television. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like Program A, if you find Program A objectionable and offensive, very simple, turn it off. If we were sitting here making slanderous remarks or doing things that were completely unacceptable and outrageous, that's a different story. I heard the one guy said, well, if, if uh, you were maligning blacks every day and making racist comments, but we aren't. Mm -mm. And when I talk about senior citizens again, and, and I already did it this hour, and I'm going to do it for the last time now, okay, on this radio station, I do that disclaimer about the fact we're not talking about all senior citizens, and you don't have to be uh, any particular age to have the old fart mentality. You can be 20. I have a question. How about if we... Get on the air. Is that mic on? Is my mic on? Okay. How about if we get on the air and call people uh, and name them and call them self-hating Jews and self-hating homosexuals? Do you think that would be actionable? Could be. Maybe. Maybe defamation? It might be. It could be, as Harry Carey would say. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, now I want to I get back <laughs> to this point again and make you people understand that you don't control and you're not going to control what any of us say on the air. Uh, if you want to live with Joseph Goebbels and company in that kind of a fascistic or communistic state, then you can exercise that kind of control. And, you know, again, all you've got to do is stop and think about the really repugnant right-wingers on the air in this community. We've got a whole bunch of them and always have over the years. Now, they're repugnant to me. Some of you may find them wonderful. They're very offensive to me. They're very repugnant. A lot of the comments they make about liberals, about Jews, about homosexuals are tremendously offensive to me. I have never suggested that any of these people be taken off the air, that the public engage in campaigns to deprive them of a livelihood. I can say that I find them offensive. I can take issue with their positions. I can try to expose them for their bigotry and the hatred that they spread. That's fine. But to try to deprive them of their First Amendment rights is outrageous and unacceptable. Give it to him, Spencer. Stick it to him, baby. <laughs> Look at Spencer, man. He's oblivious. He's got those car keys and the money. He couldn't give a damn less about this stuff. I know. I can think back when I was on KAT, and I think back to the witch hunts in 1977, the Anita Bryant days, and there were people in this community like Shirley Spellerberg and Mike Thompson and Alan Courtney who, who, who aired some of the most grotesque, there's that word again, some of the most <laughs> objectionable, disgusting, vile generalizations and stereotypes. And, and Mr. Thompson, Mike Thompson, continues to do that, by the way, on a very routine basis. Yeah. That's right. Every and weekend. yet, I don't recall Steve or myself ever coming on the air and saying, gee, the guy ought to be taken off the air. He should be deprived of an opportunity to express his viewpoint. So that's what you have to grow up and accept, and that's what the born-again fanatics just can't deal with. Quite to the contrary, uh, with Mike Thompson, who I've had a lot of different differences with in the past, I think it's important for people like Mike and for that viewpoint to be on the air. I mean, how dull it would be if everybody was... Mm -hmm. uh, and also so that we understand where some people are coming from. Anyway, that's it for this hour. The phones are full. We'll get to you when we come back because I see that there are a lot of people out there, at least eight, who want to say something. <laughs> but uh, Henry Barrow is on the floor again in that new exclusive <laughs> newsroom, and he's going to lay on the hottest WIOD news. We'll come back at 11.05. Steve, this afternoon from 2 to 6. WIOD in Broward or 655 and 278 WIOD in the Palm Beaches. Other areas may call collect. The opinions expressed by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily those of the station. Now, here's Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Unbelievable. It's 11.05 at WIOD at this awful, terrible, nasty show. <laughs> Where we're so mean. I mean, you know, Sonny Rosenberg and Inton Dolan and Hellendale City Commission, they remind me of a bunch of school kids, okay? Like a bunch of little children. Ah, uh, he's picking on us, and oh, that's terrible, and we got to get him off the air. We don't like him. You know, I, I look at this headline, and I really have to chuckle. Talk host and Hallandale renew their bitter feud. Like, like Hallandale is the centerpiece of my life, okay? <laughs> Hallandale is like a tiny, tiny pimple on the ass of progress, okay? That's Hallandale. <laughs> 
I mean, Hallandale is nothing. I, I'm sure that people all over the world, when they think about South Florida, they immediately say, oh, yeah, I'm going to go down to Hallandale for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Isn't that what you always think of? When somebody asks you where you live, like if you're on a plane traveling somewhere, and somebody says, where are you from? You say, well, I'm from, like, around Hallandale. No. No? If you lived in oh, Hallandale, don't you think they say... Fort Lauderdale or South Florida, when no. people ask them. Oh, you no. think they actually In fact, proudly... I would think, like, even if you lived in Dania, you'd probably say, well, I live in Hallandale, because <laughs> it's, so it's so much better known. Right next to Hallandale. Than Hallandale. And believe mm -hmm. me, before I'm through, I'm going to make sure that it's well known again, just like we did two years ago. They want to be on the map. They want to be the city of choice. Actually, right. what it is is the city of hate. I noticed. And I'm not talking about all the people who live there, because there obviously are some very nice oh, people who sure. live there. Some. But, um, you know, the powers that be who control it and control the image of that city are going to make it into the city of hate again, as they did two years ago, with this myopic, narrow-minded, unconstitutional, outrageous, disgusting resolution. And uh, it's just amazing to see a city body like that go after one individual, which is, in essence, what they're doing. We're going to get even with him, boy. <laughs> Incredible. Don't forget now, on the Tuesday, the 21st of February, is going to be that city commission's uh, meeting when they're going to vote on this resolution. At noon. Yeah. Great. And uh, we're going to be there. All right. Either on the air or we'll have somebody else doing a show here. We'll do right. uh, something. But we'll be there. Mm -hmm. uh, depend on it. It's 1108 <laughs> at WYOD, Fort Lauderdale. Good morning. Neil, good morning. Yes. You hit it right on the head that this whole town is homophobic. Yep. I mean, that is... No, I don't think the whole town is homophobic. There are just a certain groups and certain individuals who are extremely, extraordinarily homophobic. And you always have to wonder about people who are so fanatical in their homophobia. You have to wonder just what it is that they're worried about or what it is that they're hiding. Well, I mean, you're talking to an actual living, breathing, 25-year-old gay man in Oh, Fort my God. Well, stay out of Hallandale, pal. <laughs> and God forbid, if you, if you get... Anywhere near somebody, if you look at them, yeah. they instantly look back at you, faggot, faggot, faggot. Yeah. Oh, well, there's no question that we have a ton of that here. This is the Deep South, and uh, you'll find it all over the country, but we have a tremendous amount of it here, as we discovered, you know, 11, 12 years ago with the Anita Bryant witch hunts, and she uh, she hit a raw nerve in a lot of people. Yeah. But, yeah. I, but, you know, the fact that this program has been so successful for the last 10 years now on different stations and in different time periods, and I've had so much success in the market, indicates that the majority of people are interested in being entertained, and they're really not all that concerned about what people are doing in the privacy mm -hmm. of their homes or in their bedrooms, and they do understand the difference between things that are said on the air in obvious humor and so-called trolling for sex on the air. The interesting comment about trolling for sex on the air is that I happen to know, having been in this business for almost 30 years, that on music stations, it used to be when AM was music primarily, and now on FM music stations, there are a lot of guys, both straight and gay, who do troll for partners on the air. In fact, once upon a time, not all that long ago, I worked at a radio station where I can think of at least two different people who were air personalities, had sex with individuals while they were on the air. But I guess so long as it's straight, then it doesn't make any difference. That's okay. Sure. All you have to do is listen to that fabulous new zoo station on FM, and you hear them practically drooling every time a woman calls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there are a lot of these guys that get, like, little numbers off the air, which, hey, big deal. I did a dating show for two years on the air at W. Snooze, and we married off 37 couples during two years, and we had gay people and straight people and bisexual people, anybody that wanted to give their number out and meet other people as long as they were adults. It's a free country, okay? That's the bottom line. Yeah. And, and we're not going to allow any group of homophobic fanatics to tell me how to live or what to do or who's in my house or, you know, it's just unacceptable and it's not going to continue. Yeah, I, I just don't understand it, Neil. I mean, I work, my profession, I clean houses. For 90% of my customers are old Jewish ladies. They adore me. They adore my friends. I tell them I'm listening with my re headset every time I'm cleaning their houses to you. And they say, what are you laughing at? And I tell them, Neil Rogers. And they go, oh. He's so rude, but he's so good. Mm -hmm. What are all these old farts in Hallandale? What what happens? You cross the borderline to Broward, and they just instantly turn. To yeah, as soon as you cross the Dade Broward line, immediately there's a graying factor. That was not gaying. I said graying factor yeah. that uh, takes effect. But the, the and, thing is, um, I don't understand. Okay, I've missed whatever the comment is about this Hallandale Council. What do they think they're going to do? Pull the plug on you? 
Well, that's what they would like. It's never going to happen, but that's what they would like, and they're going about it in a very, very um, sub-rosa way. And uh, I'm glad that it made the media and that we can talk about it here. It's a legitimate news story and that the public can understand that they're at it again over there. They tried the same thing two years ago, and the only thing it accomplished was let everybody know what a bunch of fools they are over there in the, uh, in the government of Hallandale. Here they've got a crime problem, they've got a serious jaywalking problem, they've got a horrendous traffic problem, they've got problems with people who live west of the tracks over there who happen to be not living in such great wealth and comfort. They've got all kinds of social problems like any other community has. They've got a drug problem, I'm sure, and yet they have the time to allow a fanatic to come in and spend 40 to 45 minutes attacking me and taking things out of context, playing excerpts, all geared to bring them to a particular conclusion, which they willingly did. Well, it's, you know, the thing is, is that you speak the truth. And well, they, they, want to live, they want to live in their fantasy world that there's no poverty, there's no black, yeah. there's no okay. crime. Well, listen, I've got to move on, but have a great day yeah. and uh, to hell with all of them. Right? Nail their butt to the wall. Okay. <laughs> Twelve minutes after 11 at WIOD. 11.15 at WIOD. Now, one thing that I want to ask, and I think uh, probably we should have done this a long time ago. Oh, great. But there are a lot of people out there, and it doesn't make any difference whether you're a plumber, whether you're a garbage collector, a housewife, or a doctor or a lawyer, but we have a tremendous variety of people who listen to these shows and enjoy them enormously and get derived tremendous pleasure from them. And uh, if you fall into that category and you listen to this show and Steve's show, a Mike show in the morning, uh, we'd like to have you write letters to us here at WIOD. And they don't have to be books or volumes, but just nice to get a note as a cross-section uh, to develop a file of these letters because there can be no question looking into ratings that we have thousands and thousands of people out there who do derive tremendous entertainment and pleasure from these programs. And... Uh, as I, I pointed out yesterday on my show, if you want a cross-section of, you know, the, uh, the the FCC talks about community standards, uh, all you had to, <coughs> to do was listen to My voice isn't quite with me, and I'm up a little early. <coughs> uh, all you had to do was listen to that show yesterday. And you know me, I put disagreeing calls to the front, mm -hmm. and it was all I could do to find four calls in the uh, course of the hours uh, to even take issue. Well, with you know, what... lately we've been getting a lot of notes and a lot of letters from people in their 80s and late 70s who mm -hmm. say, uh, we enjoy the show mm -hmm. and we do understand the humor. We, you know, we know the group of seniors that you're talking about and that behavior and we find it just as repulsive as you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a fact. I mean, this community is tremendously handicapped because of this so-called senior citizen mentality and that doesn't mean we're generalizing or saying that everybody over a particular age is a bad person or acts in a horrendous way, but there are far too many of them who do, who mm -hmm. want this town to be an outdoor funeral parlor and who want everything to be geared toward them. I remember the two times that I tried frantically to work on a casino gambling issue because I think that if we had casino gambling in this town man you couldn't hold us back we'd be the number one tourist place in the world I think if we had casinos and who are the people primarily who are opposing opposing it oh we don't want it too much traffic it'll interfere with our lives and it'll interfere with too much and the property values will go way up and our taxes on our condos all these selfish reasons, in other words, to hell with a community or to hell with people who want jobs or to hell with people who would like to make this a thriving economic area so we don't have to have drugs as our number one industry. To hell with that. Just leave us alone. Leave it. Let us have our condos and our adult communities. And you've talked about, you know, the thing with, um, with the little nine-year-old girl and the yes. show you did on the pets. And almost every time it's the same group of angry unhappy, miserable, old people who want everybody else to share their misery. I love that call. Uh, I don't know if you were listening when uh, this older lady called in yesterday, senior citizen, 82, something like that, and she said she was a regular listener to your show, and she, you know, she loved it. And when she started listening to some of the things that you were saying about a certain segment of the older people, when yeah, you she, she referred to as the old person, yeah. she examined mm -hmm. herself, and she said, I realized that some of those characteristics were within, were within me, and I decided I didn't want to be like that, and I changed yeah. I mean, it was an incredible call. Yeah. And, I mean, not that we're here to change people's lives or to, you know, do a public service. We're an entertainment show. But it's interesting how people can grow and change through listening to... You, you, had, know, you had an old father who called in yesterday. You had three or four of them, but you had one in particular who was talking about um, the language that we use. Yes. A bimbo. I didn't know that bimbo was such an impression. <laughs> bimbo, douchebag, and old farts. And he was very exercised about that. And he asked you if you went to a function somewhere and you met a lawyer or somebody in a suit, right. would you use that language? And you said no. Or if I was introduced to a lawyer at a function and yeah. introducing my wife, would I use the term old fart? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, amazingly stupid, enough, you know. even Bob Gilbertson, who's one of the head honchos at Guy Gannett, which owns WINZ and Zeta, 
during one of the many conversations I had with him about things that we did on the air and language that we used, I used that term old fart. I said, would that be objectionable to you? And Bob, keep in mind, is a very straight-laced, oh, ultra-conservative Portland, Maine mentality. Ooh. He had no problem with that whatsoever. He thought Amazing. it was very, very inane and meaningless, and he wouldn't have no problem with it at all. But the point is, to this particular individual, and a lot of these people here live in their ivory towers who never get out of town, never get out of the neighborhood that they're in. They live in their condos. Their supermarket is right next door. Their drugstore is next door. They have their, they play their shuffleboard right on the premises, the clubhouse. If they could go to some of the other markets in this country, like New York, where many of them are from, mm -hmm. and listen to the language that Howard Stern or Scott Shannon or some of the other people use on the air, they'd say, wait a minute, what's this all about? And they would realize that we're like Lionel Playworld, you know, compared to any of these other places. No, this is tame. One guy asked me if the, if the people in real life, uh, you know, my friends in oh, the real yeah. world Do talk like that. that. I mean, my language. God, if I ever <laughs> use the kind of language that... Um, Which ties that into the young used... guy that called her at the end of the show, the uh, from Nova <laughs> University, who said that he and his friends sit around and talk about our shows... And one of the things that they've discovered is that they've tamed down their language and they use fewer of the four-letter words and now they've substituted douchebag and mung brain and some of the expressions that they listen to on these programs. But, uh, you know, so, so we obviously are polluting the minds of the youth of South Florida. <laughs> Incredible. But the, the, I, don't, I think what we shouldn't lose sight of is the fact that what's really at the heart of this is, uh, you know, an individual's personal vendetta. And that's really yeah, what, that's it's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, a homophobic mm -hmm. personal vendetta. Uh, and as I said before, the idea that here is this out-of-the-closet person who's been out of the closet now for over 12 years in his market and been, knock on wood, very, very successful on five different radio stations and making just tons of money, can't handle that. Just can't handle that fact. In other words, if you go back in a closet, like Anita said, and you shut up about it and you don't, you, you know, you, you live in cower and fear and everything, that's okay. But if you actually talk about it and, and, you know, you just go on as another human being who happens to be whatever you are, that's unacceptable to these people. Well, it's, I, I'm sure that was at the root of it, but I think it's important to understand that the maliciousness is not limited to well, no, that, homophobia. That, that's the heart of it, but all of the other maliciousness and then it stems becomes, around it. Then it comes, I mean, and my involvement in it is really interesting because it, it shows it has nothing to do with the homosexual aspect of it. It's anybody... Oh, anybody who doesn't agree. This individual doesn't like... Anybody who doesn't agree or anybody who, who interferes in the path of this witch hunt. For right. example, Tom Jicka who is a good friend of mine and who's an excellent uh, writer for TV and radio and has been for years in the market at the News, now at the Sun Sentinel. Uh, Tom Jicka had a week that, and I'm sure he'd be delighted to talk about it now that this is a legitimate news story, threats, intimidation, mm -hmm. threats over at uh, the Miami News, Howard Kleinberg and Dave Kraslow, and just another wild witch hunt campaign, all sorts of wild phone calls calling him names on the phone because he didn't happen to agree with this particular individual's point of view. You see, I hate to break the news to you, and I know the individual is monitoring and taping and uh, frantic right at this moment. The world doesn't revolve around your brain, thank God. In other words, he, he <laughs> views everything, thought. the world according to him, okay? And the world doesn't operate that way. That's just, I, I think back to that day in court when you came and testified. You were not there for the latter session, and this is also a public news story. It was in the newspapers about my attempt to get an injunction. And during the afternoon session for the little time that the judge gave us, uh, Mike Thompson was called in to testify against me and against you, and of course to uh, tell the world that uh, uh, you're a liar and you have a bad reputation as being a liar, et cetera, and so on. And, and I think back to all of that, and I'm listening to these two individuals give their rundown on community standards and what is appropriate to be on the air and what isn't, and I realize that they feel that they're in a position to tell us what it is we can do on the air. I didn't know that they were the government. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't know that they were the beginning and end of what it is that we can do on the air. So I guess from now on we'll have to check with them <laughs> ahead of time, prior restraint, and find out you know, ahead of time what's kosher and what's not. But the interesting thing about the using the legal system, because this is, you know, this is my pet peeve, using the legal system to harass people, as you yeah. said there, this individual had listened to my show for years. Never had a problem. Mm -hmm. Never had a problem, never contacted a sponsor. Used to call me at home, my buddy, my friend, always, you know, you know, yadding about you and stuff and what he was going to do to you and how he was going to get you out of the market. And then when, under oath, I testified and... Then you became the bad the guy, facts, the enemy. You know, that now he's got to stamp I mean, you out, yeah. Now I'm right in there yeah. with you and every one of my sponsors. Well, it's interesting how I, I, I'd love to find out, and I'm sure we will, probably in the not-too-distant future, in a courtroom, why... At uh, you know, for three years, none of my sponsors were contacted, and then all of a sudden, at a certain point, every sponsor and every well, isn't guest. It, but isn't the same kind of thing? Allegedly, the objection was 
mostly a lot of this recorded material and homosexual humor and so on that I did on I and Z. And then we went to Zeta and eliminated all of the recorded material, the songs and the bits and everything, and eliminated almost all of that kind of humor and sexual anything. I mean, no sexual references at all. Mm -hmm. And you know something? Didn't the harassment stop. never stopped for one day. The witch hunt never let up for a moment. So even after we took away all the material that allegedly was the objection, the fact is that the real objection is that here I am on the air and I'm going to do whatever I can to get Neil Rogers off the air under any circumstances. As uh, he told me on several occasions in private conversations. But you know the old saying, don't take it personal? Well, the bottom line is... It's personal. Take it personal. Personal. That's exactly around. what it is. It's 11:24 at WIOD. The silver anniversary celebration continues at Pompano Harness. A total of 25 nights of excitement and prize giveaways. Now, this Friday night, plan to bring the whole family to Pompano Park. They've got a night plan that fans of all ages will love. This Friday night, Pompano Park presents the world famous Cole Muffler Belgian Hitch. Six matched Belgian draft horses pulling a restored turn-of-the-century freight wagon complete with Calliope will perform at Pompano this Friday night. Bring the whole family and all the kids to Pompano Harness to see the Cole Muffler Belgian draft horse team. Children admitted free to the grandstand with a parent. And don't forget to register to win valuable prizes every night during the Pompano Park Silver Anniversary Celebration. Plus, you could be one of 25 nightly finalists who could win an Acura Integra, a New York City vacation, or a 25-inch color TV. Visit Pompano Harness for complete contest details. Don't forget, easy to get there. It's right off the Atlantic Boulevard exit of, of I-95 and right off the Pompano exit of the Turnpike. Racing tonight and every night except Sunday. Post time, 7.30 at Pompano Harness. Tonight on Channel 10 Eyewitness News. We were just playing with the gun. We were showing everyone was seeing the gun. And I turned my back and I heard the gunshot. I turned around and I saw Marcus on the floor. South Florida's children are caught up in a deadly game. They're playing with guns, triggering senseless deaths. Tonight, Susan... Talk Radio 610, WIOD. 1127 at WIOD. Have we only taken one call? Yeah. Well, we're getting carried away. Fort Lauderdale, hello. Hi, I'm up here on vacation from Toronto, and a relative of mine suggested I turn, tune into the station yesterday, and I listened to it, and I just, it seems to to me that these people in Hollandale just need a new nose to pick. And my parents yeah. are from a really senior part of Toronto, and I've never seen a bunch of rude, obnoxious people when I've come here and gone into supermarkets and see the way they carry on. That is and, correct. And these are the same people that probably wonder where all this anti-Semitism comes from. So I think they should just... Well, let me, let me say this to you. Mm -hmm. They're not... May I, may I hasten to point out that not all senior citizens are Jewish. Mm -hmm. There certainly is an element. There are... Jewish senior citizens who fall into the stereotype, but I, I caution you that when you start making anti-Semitic remarks, that it doesn't, it's not very becoming. Mm -hmm. No, I know, I'm just saying, this, this is, I'm in an area right now where it's probably 99% Jewish, mm -hmm. and the way they carry on in supermarkets fighting with each other, I've just never seen that before. It just seemed really strange. Okay, I appreciate your call, but again, I read something there, but you know, you have to be very cautious, because, and we went through that two years ago, the same thing, where people start twisting into it, it's mm -hmm. only uh, old Jewish people, Jewish women in particular, who behave a certain way, and obviously it is not. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have an open line in Broward, 524-9463, 524-WIOD, Del Rey, hello. Neil. Yeah. Been on the phone. I've been waiting on the phone for an hour. You know something? You're worth it. Okay. Hey, uh, did any of this... Well, we'll find out if you're worth it, sir. All right. I'll give it a try. Uh, did any of this crap roll downhill and uh, splash on Stan? What do you mean by that? Well, did Stan Major, did his uh, sponsors catch any of this harassment? Oh, abso well? absolutely. In fact, the Stan is a... Uh, uh, Glenn and Stan and I were forced, pressured into signing a letter in which we agreed... Uh, not to mention this individual's name on the ear, with the exception of a legitimate news stories, which obviously this uh, latest thing is. But there are no questions. Stan, in fact, Stan's show was being monitored and taped on a daily basis, just like mine, because Stan, after all, is a friend of mine, and anybody who is a friend of mine is an enemy of this individual, whether it's Fat Rich, whether it's Tom Jicka, whether it's Glenn, whether it's Stan, whether it's Steve. That's and uh, all of these people have fallen in the path, and as you say, the wrath has rolled down on their heads. That's too bad. Hey, Neil. No changes. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay, we have an open line in uh, Boca, 278-WIOD, 278-9463. It's 11.30, and let's go to Margate. Hello. Hi, good morning, Neil and Glenn. And Steve, are you still there? Steve is uh, wandering in the hallway. Okay. Um, uh, I know Steve. My name's Lisa. I'm in Margate. And I've been listening to you, Uncle Neil, on and off now for about 10 years. And, you know, back when you used to do serious shows, which mm -hmm. I really enjoyed much more, to tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as a broadcasting student, 
I'm just, I want to help defend your and mine and everybody else's First Amendment rights you know, in any way I can. And if you want, you know, letters to Cox Broadcasting, is that who you would like the letters? Yeah, or to, or, to, or to me and Steve, yeah, or to uh, the uh, station, or to me, Steve, whoever you want to send it to. I'd like to see copies of all of them when they come in. But it would be nice, because I know we've got a tremendous cross-section, many thousands of people out there. And uh, un unlike what Mr. Rosenberg says, they are not mostly morons. You know, I joke about uh, pinheads and morons. But the fact is that we've got a lot of very bright people in all walks of life who listen to these shows, get tremendous pleasure and entertainment, people who are out there on the road, traveling salesmen, uh, people in their cars for other reasons. Uh, lawyers, doctors, you name it, they're listening to these shows, get in, understand where we're coming from, and are not offended by it. There's nothing to be offended by. No, there isn't. Uh, can we write, like, to the FCC or to the judge or your attorney? No, no, it would be better to write to us here. Just write to, to Cox Broadcasting Incorporated. Yeah, just WIOD. WIOD, mm -hmm. all right. And also, I'd just like to point out that, you know, I, I'm taking this kind of personally because I have a uh, narrow-minded religious fanatic in my neighborhood who is trying to stop my right to buy penthouse and adult films. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, see, these, these people, uh, they, they live in this very uh, fascistic kind of world in which they can pick and choose, they can censor, they can determine what everybody else can do, what they can read, what they can think, what they can say on the radio, what they can listen to, uh, and the rest of us are not going to tolerate it. It's just, just not acceptable. All right. Well, this is the first time I've ever called you, Neil. Well, I appreciate it. Okay. And, uh, you know, you let us know what we can do. And if we can uh, show up at the uh, city commission meeting on February 21st, we, you know. Great. I'll let you know more. Too. I'll let you know more about you. that as we get closer to it. But I guarantee you, we're going to be a lot of us there. Trust me. Okay. I will okay. do. Thanks you have a, lot. a good one. Bye bye. 11.32 at WIOD. It really is, you know, I am embarrassed more than anything else for Sonny Rosenberg and that bunch of clowns over there in Halliday. I'm mortified and humiliated for them. Because to get conned into this Which and to be happened. willing co-conspirators, and I'm sure they were given a lot of material up front and, and egged into this, and then Sonny, of course, seeing the opportunity to yeah. have his little vendetta. And, of course, just recently he wrote that letter yeah. to South Miami Magazine. How could they possibly write me as one of the ten best jobs in South Florida because I'm a this and I'm a that, et cetera, and so on. And uh, so he invites this character to come and speak for 40, 45 minutes and lead this witch hunt and distortion and take things out of context and twist my intent. Uh, it's embarrassing, Sonny. I mean, you're acting like a five-year-old child. And the fact that two years ago I made a monkey out of you then, I got news for you. We got more people listening now and more support from sponsors and, and this company, by the way, Cox Broadcasting, supports me and supports Steve Kane 10 billion percent, okay? Unlike some of the people I worked for in the past who were a bunch of nervous Nellies and who every other day would tell you a different story, we have the complete support of this corporation, which is only worth, I don't know how many billion dollars, but th these are people of substance and people of intelligence yeah. and people of character, and they're not just going to turn over and play dead for a small group of fanatics who want to turn our lives into a nightmare and who want to harass our sponsors and interfere in our business, including Sonny Rosenberg. So, Sonny, I would suggest that you and your merry bunch of wild men over there in Hallandale take care of the important things, you know, like the outhouse gang <laughs> and all the other really big stuff that you have going on that's put Hallandale on the map. <laughs> Maybe you even ought to get the sweet and low police reinforced over there, too, while you're at it. It's 11.34 at WIOD. We'll be right back. 11.37 at WIOD. By the way, the people who write these stories for the local newspapers, I mean, they get these stringers and these other people who have no idea what they're writing about, and uh, they do such a sloppy job. There are so many mistakes in the two stories by Lida Longa. Who? Lida, Lida, whatever that is. L-Y-D-A. <laughs> Longa. She pronounces it Lida because I spoke to her. And uh, Don Vanetta Jr. at the Herald. For example, Don Vanetta says in the first, uh, in the second paragraph, WYOD talk show host Neil Rogers trashed his favorite stomping grounds, the city of Hallandale, on Tuesday urging his listeners to call City Hall and jam the switchboard. Hundreds of people did. Nobody ever said anything about jamming the switchboard, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, if that's what happens, if enough people call, that's a byproduct of people being outraged. But uh, it's always interesting how they like to characterize, and they do these little, and the Herald's famous for this, they do little editorial comment along with a news story. <laughs> Instead of just reporting the facts, they throw in these cute little editorial comments. For example, this $300 million lawsuit that the individual has filed in federal court against me, there isn't any lawsuit against me. It's against another company that I worked for before. Mm -hmm. It's not against me. And that's here in the news story. Unbelievable. 
And in Lida Longa, or Lita, or whatever her name is, <laughs> uh, she's also got some... Well, I don't even want to go into the one about uh, this company and the... Uh, I'm telling you, folks, the people who give you the news, they're really on top of things, okay? It's 1139 at WIOD, South Miami. Hello. We're here at the supermarket ride in Kendall. Apparently, a woman in aisle 13 was trying to purchase Swiss cheese when she was blocked by a group of Dr. Dobson supporters who feel that Ted Bundy's use of Swiss cheese may also have fueled his violent behavior. There is also a group of anti-Dr. Dobson activists who feel that listening to Dr. Dobson may cause people to compulsively befriend and videotape other serial killers. During one tense moment, the woman's shopping cart was moving directly toward a Miami police officer, but thanks to new police guidelines, he merely stepped out of the way. This has been Live Report. Okay, good job, excellent. Uh, open line in Dade, where our uh, WIOD spy just called in, 751-WIOD. Let's go to Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah. Good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. This is Roger. I just wanted to tell you that you hit the nail on the head before. These juvenile delinquents up in uh, Hallandale, the whole problem is they're just simply jealous of the program that you do have. I've listened to you for years, and you and Steve Kane are a pair of aces. I just wanted to tell you that. Okay, thank you, Roger. Thank you. It's 11.40, 20 before there. Look at that. All the daylight just went out at once when Roger disappeared there. 751-WIOD, <laughs> 751-9463, Boynton Beach. Hello. Hello, Neil. Uh, I've been listening to IOD for about three years now, and uh, my radio and my truck, I've even got a screwed so nobody can change channels on me. But uh, what I want to say is the uh, thing that's going on here with this thing here, people, people listen to your show, but they don't hear it. They, uh, they take one word out of context and make something personal out of it. Well, you know, the interesting part of it is the overwhelming majority of people who listen do hear and do understand the humor and do understand how it's intended because, amazingly enough, other than the city of Hallandale, which has had a vendetta against me for two years because of, you know, the light that I put them in a couple of years ago by telling the truth, other than them and this other one individual... There is, there's nothing. There is nothing there. In other words, we don't have any mountain of complaints or None. people uh, who misunderstand the humor or get bent out of shape. Uh, it just doesn't exist, which is astonishing when you consider how widely listened to this program is. There's just nothing there. No, there's not. It's, it's, it's wide open and open, and you need to take it in the context of what it really is. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, stimu you know, it stimulates uh, many things, not just uh, one train of thought. And uh, it, I don't know. It's I had a lot more I wanted to say, but uh, it just it gets, it gets upsetting. Okay, well, I appreciate your comment. Thank you. Thanks. 1141 at WIOD, an open line in Palm Beach. 655, could you turn that down a couple of degrees, Steve? Sure. It is just boiling in here. 655-9463, <laughs> 655, WIOD. Do you think we could get um, Scott to cut us a rejoiner that says that when you talk about... <laughs> the old people, it's not necessarily chronological no, we could age. Get, we could get Jay Michaels to get a thing that says, It's just a joke. <laughs> it's just a joke. Because I wouldn't want to steal Jay, Jay's line. You know, we could, maybe we could get Dr. Vots to record it for us. Okay? Now, there's an idea. Plantation, hello. Yeah, Neil, Glenn, how you doing? Okay. 49-year-old straight guy, listen to you a long time. I don't always agree with everything you say, but I am entertained by what you do because I understand the humor in it. And when Steve has one of his contrived debates, if it's not on a subject that I happen to have a passing interest in, that's why God meant the off button that's and correct. the selection button. Yep. And I can change to another station. Huh. Really? Um, Shocking. Yeah. Are you sure? Is that revolutionary? It is. I never heard of such a thing. Unorthodox, sir. Well, maybe I better patent that. Because in, in my car radio, like, i got two FM band things. It's like 12, 18 different channels uh, that I can punch up. And mine is always, like, in one play. I can't get it moved. Well, I think you maybe ought to go over to Sound Advice and have the guys look at it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're specialists in frozen dial syndrome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I, un I understand the humor. I support your right to do what you do. And I don't necessarily, like I said before, I don't necessarily agree with everything you say, but... That's not the point. The, yeah. the humor and the the entertainment is what it's all about. Okay. And I don't think anybody should have the right to stop that. That is correct. They don't have the right to stop it, as they're going to find out. Okay, you have a good one. You too. 1143 at WIOD, an open line in Broward, 524-9463. 524, 524 WIOD. we got a mobile in Palm Beach. Hello. 
Hello, Neil. Yeah. My lips are blue. What can you tell me? Oh, well, you, well, the doctor's here for you. Any minute, he'll be right in. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Neil, you're terrific. Don't let him get you. Okay. Take care. Watch those lips now. Yeah. Watch what you do with them. My feldine is blue. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, see, this is what really gets to these old farts, man, is that, see, it hit a raw nerve. If there weren't any truth to it, right. then nobody would have ever cared. Yeah, it wouldn't it. have made the newspapers all around the world. But because there was so much truth in it, because it hit such a universal nerve in this town, where we've been plagued by this so-called senior citizen mentality for so many decades, people just went wild. Yeah. Because they said, hey, finally, somebody's got the guts to, to expose this thing that we're all strangled by here. So true. So true. He's a nasty guy. He used to be such a genius and such a bright boy, but he's a nasty guy now. Unbelievable. My mother was... I was at my mother's for lunch yesterday after all this frantic stuff that went on here, and I walk in the door, and within two minutes, her phone rang. And she said hello, and it was like five seconds, and she hung it up. And I thought, what the heck was this? And she tells me a story about an elderly lady friend of hers with whom she had a disagreement. And my mother was definitely in a write-on. It was an incredible story. A year ago or so. And every now and then, this woman calls her up and gives her the raspberry. <laughs> a year ago? And I, I said to her, I said to her, that is exactly the kind of thing I talk about. This juvenile yeah. behavior going back to your second childhood, okay? An argument about something where the woman was totally in the wrong, by the way. But even assuming she was right a year ago, and the best she can do is every now and then call and <laughs> on the phone and hang up. That's a uh, true that story. gives new meaning to the word old fart. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Well. Oh, we, oh, here it comes. All right. Gonna... Uh, I, I didn't hear the call myself. Now perhaps when she calls and hangs up, she says. <laughs> but I, I didn't really. Hear it myself. Okay, we'll have to check it out. We'll do a little uh, investigative reporting on that. 11.45 at WIOD. we got a mobile in Broward. Hello. Neil, good morning. Yes, sir. Um, two quick uh, points. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that I'm real proud of you guys. I think you guys uh, are doing the right thing by saying what's on your mind, even though sometimes I and probably a lot of other listeners don't particularly agree. In this case, let me tell you, I really agree with what you're saying. The second point I have is... I happen to have been a lot of an editor on Sunday night with my uh, my family and a couple of friends. You are so right about this place. Sensational. This place yeah, one of the very absolutely best. Absolutely outstanding. Yep. And what even got me crazy in the beginning was when I walked in, I looked to the right, and there's a picture of Neil Rogers. I didn't know you were such a good-looking guy, Neil. Oh, yeah. Have a good one. You must have been looking at Stan. No, it was you. Okay. <laughs> Later. Thanks, Bye. sir. 11.46 at WIOD. I don't think that guy was my type. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463. 524 WIOD in Boca, which of course is oblivious. They don't even know what we're talking about. A uh, 2789463. Oh, no. Now, don't expect Palm Beach to come oh, out. No. You know, this is not, uh, they're probably in with John Levitt now, you know. <laughs> uh huh. No uh, Pompano, hello. Hi, Neil. Hi. Um, well, what is the address for WIOD? Uh, just the Miami 33141. You don't need that street address or any uh, big song right. and dance. Just WIOD, Miami 33141. Wonderful. And, um, See, it's a shame that they don't have yuppie citizen specials. I mean, what about all those yuppies out here? Everything's catered to these senior citizens. Yeah. What about all the young families with their two and three kids who are trying to make it and squeeze out a living, you know, or people who are sending two, three kids to college and trying to, you know, make enough money to make ends meet? How come they don't get a a $2 movie or 99-cent special movie? We can't afford to go out and, you know, eat all the time and have these movies. Everything caters to these senior citizens. Yeah. And the the, the, the sad part of it is a lot of those people have got more money than God and live in their six, seven hundred thousand dollar condos and spend their Every day going out to see what the CD rate is today. You know that's their big pastime. And they... boy, don't don't take away their little discount, man, because that's what it's all about. Yeah, why doesn't somebody have a drive to help out some of us younger people that our salaries just stay stagnant? We get nothing ahead, and we're paying all these taxes. And what the hell they think would happen if all us young people moved the heck out of here? Maybe maybe some what smart m- listen. Happen? Maybe some smart business people will start a younger citizen special, and if yeah. you're under 65, they'll give you a discount. Yeah, right. You bet. And uh, it's too bad that those people in Houndale don't have enough business to keep them busy where they have to disrupt our right to listen to your show, which keeps my day going. And here we have to discuss this BS when we could be entertained. Yeah, we could be having a good time. You're right. We could have a good time, and here we are listening to this crap. Okay, I'm with you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. 
Hey, I got a ponderous. question. I got a question. Yes. On this next city commission meeting in Hallandale on February, February 21st, 21st, do we get yeah. to attend? We're going to do the show from there. Really? They don't know that yet. The norm. Didn't you hear Norm suggest that? That's true. I didn't know we oh, were going to go through it. Well, if we they know it, it now. <laughs> I mean, there's just That's no great. way they can keep us out. Are these uh, these are open, open to, the to the public, public correct? Sure. Oh, See, yesterday's God. thing was one of these where we had a first reading, okay, this resolution. Mm -hmm. But then they have to have a second reading and have discussion about it, and then they will vote on it on February 21st. Oh. And, of course, when that takes place, uh, we're allowed to have discussion. And I'd be delighted to have discussion with these people up there because, um, you know, they, they didn't even tell us in advance that this is going to take place. They put it on the agenda, and then they go and they make they allow somebody to make a 40-minute attack against you without any uh, possibility of being represented or defending yourself. But, that's, but that, see, that is typical of the whole thing that's going on. I had no idea of the campaign of harassment against people I know and guests and stuff until... My, you know, Norman went into the file on this thing, yeah. and the the hate campaign against me has been. If, if this audience had any idea, know. you said yesterday, and it's true. If they had any idea, mm -hmm. the nature and number of letters on legal letterhead, by the way, to add some clout to them, that have been sent out to just about anybody you can imagine. There's a very nice lady who listens to this program, a big fan of mine, who happens to work at a church in the community. Okay, who called me one day and mentioned the church that she works at. Well, that was her first mistake, because once she mentioned the name of the church and her name on the air... That she was on the list. Th she was on the list because she <laughs> likes the show. So she and her pastor received numerous harassing and threatening phone calls from the same individual we've been talking about who did his thing in Hallandale yesterday. And I, I just want the audience to try to understand the magnitude of this, where a private individual who d likes the show is called and threatened and her job is threatened and going to get her in trouble and a pastor in trouble because she likes the show. That's just like something out of the Joseph Goebbels School of Broadcasting. Was, it, was that the one where, that. where the, the individual threatened to turn her into the Pope or something? Evidently. Like, like, or I don't, something like I don't that. know. Or turn her into a Pope or something, <laughs> something of that sort. I don't know. But she's not. And to her credit, and she's a lovely person, she ain't taking it sitting down. And there's a whole list of people out there who have been similarly harassed who also are not going to take it sitting down. You know, free speech is one thing, but interfering in people's lives and right to do business and their privacy and making threats, that's got nothing to do with freedom of speech. And Those harassment are all is another, illegal acts. Harassment is another thing. Intimidation is another thing. Uh, misuse of the legal profession is oh, another thing. Oh, they're just thing. a whole long list, baby, yeah. 11.51 at WIOD. Char Hut is open now, ready to do their thing. 11.55 at WIOD. We've got a mobile in Broward. Hello. Hello, Neil. Uh-huh. It's Selma. I'm here with my friend. Rosie, how are you? <laughs> On our way to the Piccadilly Cafeteria. Okay. We want to say hello to Carol Feldman. How is your effort then? We uh, want to say hello to Carol Feldman. Oh, my my powder is... I use powder, Neil. I don't use it. The, the sticky stuff. Okay. Take a powder, pal. Uh, we have an open line in Broward. 524-WIOD. <laughs> we got a pay phone in Broward. Hello. Neil. Yeah. Third time caller. Okay. How you doing? Okay. Fine, thanks. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey I got to, you guys are great. Uh, I know. You know this this Hollandale thing. You know you can't you can't tell these people if you don't like it. You got to. You know, turn it off. Well, you know, Hallandale didn't get the message two years ago. I just, we, we didn't give enough publicity. It got into papers all around the world, from the Philippines to China to the uh, United Kingdom. I mean, you name it. you got to put this in layman's terms for them. You know, explain it. You get, get a crayon and a piece of paper. Yeah. And I think you put it in something that they'll understand, a language they'll understand. Yeah, crayons and piece of paper may uh, fit right in because this particular individual we're talking about who spurred all of this yesterday very often sends uh, notes in crayon and magic <laughs> marker and red and, uh, you know, so so maybe that's something they can understand. Yeah, if they don't like the show, you can't tell them. It's like, put, make the comparison. If you don't like the sweet and low, don't take it. Take regular sugar. Oh, that's you know? a good idea. But, you know, if you don't like this particular place's early bird special, you don't have to go back and eat it. Oh. Well, that's kind of revolutionary. That is shocking, you yeah. know. You know, they, they don't understand this radio business. First yeah. of all, they're... Fingers are all mangled from, uh, you know, their arthritis, arthritis condition. They're on the damn Well, I don't know where they've had some of those fingers. You know, it could be something else. I'm not sure. You know, Especially uh, in Hallandale at the city commission. Hey, moving on to topical, did you see the uh, Did you see any news this morning on TV? No. Uh, yeah, they had an ad for the, uh, the Arsenio Hall show, the, an advertisement, and uh, they had an old clip from Geraldo being on there. Yeah. He's in the nude, and he's got a little black square covering his genitals, right? Mm -hmm. And honest to God, this was on the on the show. Geraldo's looking at uh, 
and Arsenio, real cocky, says, hey, the clothes don't make a man. Arsenio looks down at his genital area and says, well, in this case, they do. <laughs> <laughs> no lie, it was on the show this morning. Outstanding, and uh, it sure fits. You know what they say, if the slippers fit, wear them. Oh, blue hair story for you. Yeah. Uh, again, on the, on the news this morning, uh, Channel 7 News, they, they're running a, uh, a big thing about the British invasion, 25th year anniversary, right? The Beatles. So, uh, yeah, exactly. So they've got an old film clip, uh, Beatles coming off the plane at the airport, and then they switch over to uh, the hotel where they're staying, and they proceed to tell everybody that they gave them a whole floor, and, the, you know, the outside is just mobbed with people. So this news commentator cuts over to this blue hair, and the only reason you could tell is in black and white. The hair was, uh, you know, a whitish color, and the face was all wrinkled. But I swear to God, I saw this person in Holland there last week. I, I could almost swear it was the same one. The newscast is wondering what, you know, an old farted blue hair, you know, if they didn't like that, they could have hit the button, uh, is doing at the hotel. It's all young people, all Beatle fans, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, he cuts over to this old person and says, what are you doing here? Oh, I heard there was an early bird special at the airport. <laughs> what? Oh. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. Couldn't believe it. What about this elephant business up in Orlando? How much material have you got? I mean, you know, that, that would have been a great spot to pause and say, have a great day. You've done a great job. It's all, it's all a matter of timing. I had to cut right to the next, yeah. uh, next spot. So let me, let me say in closing, have a great day. You did a sensational job. Hey, thanks, Neil. You have a good day, too. Hi. Okay. Well, what well about... he was on such a roll there that I thought he was probably going to overlap into the news and maybe into the 1 o'clock hour and God only knows where else. But he was, he was good, just a well, little enthusiastic. What about this elephant business? Glenn has an off-the-air call in the studio from a local newspaper during the big noon news break. So right. again, boy, well, we're really is, what a day. We're really huh? doing it here today. Gosh. Boy, it is incredible. We hope we're sure that they're monitoring in Hallandale, man. Now this will give them something constructive to do. Now they can listen Finally. to the show every day yeah. and make taped excerpts and take out little bits and pieces that they don't like and tape them all together. And they just have a wonderful time. Let me tell you, Sonny Rosenberg, RT, RJ, whatever the hell your name is, all you fakers over there in Hallandale, one thing you are, you may not be good, but you're consistent. Aren't they? Here we are two years later, they still haven't learned a damn thing. <laughs> okay, April's got the new news. We'll come back at 12.05. News Talk Radio 610 WIOD presents Neil Rogers. To get in touch and talk, call 751 WIOD in Dade, 524 WIOD in Broward, or 655 and 278 WIOD in the Palm Beaches. Other areas may call collect. The opinions expressed by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily those of the station. Now, here's Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Now, we're going to do it on the air 1205 at WIOD. We take the important calls here first. Carmine. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Okay, Carmine. We're on the air, by the way, so watch yourself. All right, what's going on, buddy? Well, we're just uh, sitting here starving to death mentally, you, mentally and physically. Who do you have there with you today? What do you mean, who do I have? Besides Glenn. Steve, Kane. Oh, I thought so. Thought... Star of stage, screen. All right. Hey, I got a problem, Neil. Yes? I haven't cashed a ticket yet at Gulfstream. Well, don't, don't look at mine. I gave out a alias Berman yesterday. Carmine finished the 11th. <laughs> well, I haven't been there. In a 12-horse like, race. Started. Is this Carmine? This yeah. Carmine. How you doing, Glenn? Hey, good. How you doing, buddy? All right. You haven't been there in a long time. What happened? Um, I no reason. Is too good. <laughs> oh, no. No reason, Carmine. Just haven't gotten over your way for some reason. All right. So I'll send over about a half an hour. Oh, super. That'll be great. All right. Take care. Now, Ton tons great. of food, Carmine. Just a bunch of stuff, you know. Uh, yeah, no problem. We always depend it. on you. Thanks a million. All right. Take care, buddy. Bye. Yeah, I'm that glad you hung up on him before I gave him a tip. Don't it's be giving out tips. No, I'm right. cold. I'm By the cold. way, the bird today picks um, hot, hot pillow. pillow in the sixth um, with Michael Torso. <laughs> and my pick is uh, Plate Queen in the ninth race. That's in a big race, the Shirley Jones Handicap. That's a chalk, probably, with Craig Perrette. What is it? Plate? Plate Queen. Plate Queen. Yeah, well, I'm big on all those queen horses. <laughs> anyway, it's 12.07 at WIOD, so and lunch is coming, me. and now we got to hear that. Can you try to control yourself? Oh, My I don't want to tell the whole story. What? Oh, you want to pick one, too? <laughs> oh, this man, man. Monkey see, monkey do. Oh. Just don't get involved in it, okay? <laughs> Stick with your baseball cards. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's hear the nah. Hallandale Digest story. Well, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but I'm just going to Why gonna not? Tell. Well, um... 
What just amazed me was, and I have no idea why the reporter called me from the Hellenville I know, this is the second time in a row that happened. I know. And I, they don't want to talk to me, they, I guess, at my favorite newspaper. But the guy said to me, uh, apparently someone, you know, caused a... Re apparently someone appeared at the Hallandale City Commission and caused all this, apparently. And I said, well... Allegedly. Yeah, I said, yeah. if you open up the Miami Herald or the Sun Sentinel... Oh, no, they don't read these papers There's gigantic in Hallandale, stories no. about it, and he goes, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's the Hallandale Digest, ladies and gentlemen, right there when you need a man, on top of the news, underneath the news, so they're underneath gonna, the birdcage. They're going to talk to you later in the week about this. Oh, are they really? This. Yeah, well, yeah, there's no big hurry. You know, it, uh, well, they only come out once a week. Yeah. Late, probably the end of the week, he said, they'll talk to you. Did he say maybe. which week? <laughs> well, maybe they'll get around to it before the 21st when we have the big meeting coming up with the vote, well, you know? Don't hold your breath. But... No, I didn't say the 21st of which month. <laughs> <laughs> that Hallandale Digest. And you see, that paper fits so perfectly in that city because it's very slow. You know what I mean? Like the driving on Hallandale Beach Boulevard, very slow. <laughs> Oblivious comes to my brain. You know, I, seriously, my dentist is over there on Hallandale Beach Boulevard, and I dread... <laughs> See, most people dread going to the dentist because they are afraid of the drill. I couldn't care. In fact, by the time I get through with this show, I'm ready for the drill, okay? But the drive but, there, Oh, yeah. the traffic over there. And then they, that building where they drive around looking for a parking spot and they stop. If somebody, if somebody comes out of the building, they stop. And they yeah. walk off traffic assuming that they're going to go to their car and open up a spot, you know. And people are honking their horns and swearing at each other and just going crazy over there. So anyway, one of the nurses who works for my dentist tells me always these horror stories is about trying to get from one side of Hallandale. I'm not talking about by foot, by car. <laughs> by car. Like over to the Diplomat Mall on the other side of the street. It can't be done. It takes like right. 45 minutes yeah. to get across that street Should by be better car. better to walk, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, all she's got to do is get a, get a cane or a walker and go out in the middle of the street and hold it up and stop traffic. And that generally is the way you cross the street in Hallandale. Mm. But, uh, boy... See, this is one of those cases where we hit a raw nerve because of the truth in Hallandale. That's the problem. A raw nerve. Right, Sonny? Uh-huh. <laughs> a raw nerve. Sonny nerd. listens to the John Levitt show. Uh-huh. And, and the nerd is Sonny, I think. Okay, it's a nine minutes past noon at WIOD. Speaking of uh, John Levitt, the Palm Beach line is open. That's the only one. It's 655-9463. 655-WIOD. I hope that Carmine brings some lunch for Cheryl because, boy, she is looking izzy. He's bringing tons of food. You can have a little bit. Let's, let's not go crazy all in one day. In little increments, you can increase your intake, okay? Here's a mobile in Broward. Hello. Hello, Glenn. Hello, uh, Neil. How you doing? Okay. Yeah, this is Jamie and Marcy's brother. Brother? I, I don't want to make your whole day. I don't want to really excite you. Don't go ballistic or you anything. You mean it's not Jamie and Marcy's loan officer? It's their brother? No, it really is their brother. I just came down from Chicago last night. I moved up there in May. I, I want you to know that I don't think people here really appreciate this weather. Everyone's very concerned about many different topics, but you've got to get into this a little bit. And mostly it's really... Well, I don't have to get into anything, okay? I don't have to get into anything. We're in the middle of an impotent discussion here about a crisis on this radio station and this show, and you're hocking me a chinic about the weather. Oh, you're, you're, you're harping on me because you don't like my brother. I didn't say that at all, although um, now, that <laughs> you, now that you mention it. I've, I've got some gold for you, a necklace perhaps. No, really, it's great to hear your voices, really. It really is. Just came down driving into uh, into the city with my father-in-law, and uh, we're listening to the show. He listens to you every day. Terrific. And it's really good to hear your voices again. By the way, we were wondering, what, what happened to Stan? What's he doing? He's uh, still around, and the next person that asked me that question, I'm going to punch him in the mouth. He said, if, I had, <laughs> if I had any news to report, I would pass it along to you. I, I spoke to him just the other, just yesterday. And he and Lori went out and bought a fondue pot. That's the most exciting news I can pass on from Stanley. They bought a fondue pot. <laughs> well, we love fondue, don't we? That is correct. Aren't okay. you glad you asked? Hey, you guys take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. <coughs> Boy, what a call, huh? <laughs> it's 11 past noon at WIOD. We have an opening where Jamie and Marcy's brother just hung up in Broward. There it goes. And I want to tell you about a great place to buy a great car, Toyota of Hollywood. The Super Turbo is just a sensational car. I'm probably going to do a bad thing in months to come. I'm going to keep talking about that car, not about the Camry and the Cressida and the Corolla and all the other great Supras. Um, you know, they're all sensational cars with great styling, tremendous workmanship. But the Super Turbo, just such a fast car. And I don't want to talk about drag racing with those young guys in her Cadillacs, because that, that kind of leaves the impression that I'm trolling for those young guys out on the highway. And I just... Uh, 
I don't know. You know, you get a little bit too old for that. I don't know when that happens, but sooner or later you get too old for that. Anyway, check out the tremendous selection and the great deals, and you'll, you're will you going to be just so impressed when you do business over there because they are the nicest people. They treat you with kid gloves. They put you... The number you have reached, 656-6847, has been changed. The new number is 501 501- Two seven six six five six eight four seven zero one three nine eight six four five eight three five five seven one six zero four two seven six. Please make a note of it. Okay. Now don't be calling that last number there and harassing those people, okay? Because they might have some emergency business. It's uh, 1215 at WIOD. That Hallandale line, you know, the more I'm sitting here and I'm absorbing that story, like, uh, oh, gee, there's something in the paper about it? Wow. <laughs> That's true. That's absolutely true. You talk about oblivious. Slow. Slow. We're at a very okay. slow pace, okay? A snail's pace. Perfect for right. Hallandale. Yeah, it is perfect for Hallandale. Miami, hello. Hi. Hi, uh-huh. guys. Yeah. How you doing? Pretty good. Oh, well, listen, as long as, uh, what's his name, <laughs> Jamie's brother called, I'm Carmine's sister. Wow, oh, are you really? serious? No. Oh, okay, oh, just made that gee. up. That sounded so good. <laughs> just trying to get on our good side. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's it. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be telling you. I'm calling from Turnberry. They might uh, turn me in or something. Yeah, you better watch out. Yeah. The uh, radio police may yeah, be knocking on your door any second now. I- I, I know. I better be careful. I'm not going to answer my doorbell. No, don't. Uh, I wonder what's going to happen if Gulfstream closes. Did you see the article in yesterday's paper about the... About the big, uh, yeah, the incestuous battle that they're having yeah, with the right. Don family there, yeah. God, all we need is another Hallandale in there with their, uh, like, Century Village or whatever. Oh, boy, wouldn't that oh, be great? My. We could have, like, Winmore South. Oh, Let's not do it. Oh, my God, can you imagine? No, don't ever close down Gulfstream. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think yeah. so, but they're... Uh, Giving food for thought for these uh, stupid jerks at Hallandale. Uh, what else do I want to say? Tomorrow's Hallandale paper should be out. There should be something interesting in it tomorrow. Like what? I don't know about your story. Like no, a story about it, last Christmas? It'll be yeah. another week. They are, I already talked so? to them. Yeah, it'll be oh, another yeah. week. They're just, they're just getting wind of it now, you know. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, dear. Listen, yeah. that meeting that you were talking about, is that going to be open to the public? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, City yeah. commission meetings all have to be open to the public. Oh, is that what's going to be, a commission meeting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, nope. we should get together and everything. Oh, we'll be there with bells on. February yeah. 21st, that's uh, two weeks from yesterday. Oh, the 21st? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. So don't make any plans now. Oh, no, no, no. I've got that on my calendar. At and noon, no- in fact, we might even get some of our sponsors to cater a little lunch outside. Oh, God, Can you imagine be- in Hallandale? <laughs> We'll be giving away sweet and low if you roll. Bring your bag. Uh, oh, God. Don't forget not landing tomorrow night. Okay. You missed it last week. I know. I know. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. 1217 at WIOD. That would be great, wouldn't it? We could get uh, Joe or somebody to cater the affair out there, and we could, uh, like, uh, somewhere in the public. And we'd also be passing out some incredible literature, too, which would give you really uh, some public information, which most of you haven't seen yet. Uh-huh. But uh, that's all to come. Yeah, it's going to be some... Didn't I say last week, I told you, this is going to be the week that there was going to be some tremendously exciting stuff. And, of course, at the time I said it, it was a you joke. You didn't know. Yeah, it was just a joke. <laughs> but lo and behold, we had this real uh, bonanza yesterday, and uh, here we are. Now we finally have a place to give those bumper stickers out. Yeah. Yeah, we'll give out those uh, unbelievable bumper stickers yeah. at the Hallandale City Commission meeting on February 21st. Good idea. Yeah. That would be great. Uh-huh. Okay, moving along to Miami. Hello. Hi, Neil. Hi, Glenda. Yes, sir. I'm calling from South Miami to Gateway to Hallandale. And, uh, now, I... be nice to me, sir. I live down there, too. Now, come on. Okay. Well, that was the nicest thing anybody's <laughs> called you in a long time. What's wrong with that? Well, you don't live in the city of South Miami. Which yes, is... I do. You do. Yes. City of Pleasant Living. Well, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another taxpayer. That's right. Uh, By the way, we understand that the OGIS City Commission is having an emergency meeting to discuss whether this program should be allowed to continue in light of the scurrilous comments I've made about OGIS over the years. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, may I suggest that, that to get on the agenda for the February 21st meeting, it's probably required that you uh, either call or write to get scheduled first. Yeah, well, I'll leave that up to Norman Kent. I'm sure Norman knows just exactly. Uh, Storm and Norman will take care of all of that. Okay, because the commission, in order to ac- accommodate uh, you... Uh, uh, you know, they should accommodate everyone since Mr. T is not a resident of Broward and they gave him three quarters of an hour. Yeah, that's kind of interesting that yeah. somebody who's kind of a carpetbagger from another county, and I mean a distant part, the southern part of another county, 
uh, would come and speak to a commission in Broward County. Rather unusual, isn't it? Well, the whole proceeding was bizarre at best. Well, you know, this 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 guy, Mr. T, he, he, he reminds me of a guy who goes to the movies, uh, comes out and goes to the box office and says he didn't like the film and he wants everybody's money back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. In fact, Mr. T, I like that. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think we've well, we have Mr. X. Why not Mr. Mr. T? Mr. X and Mr. T and Mr. Z. We got them all, man. Yeah. We got all the letters covered. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you don't suggest that we courteously call Mr. T's law mm -hmm. office. No, I we... certainly do not quite the opposite i suggest that you uh, leave him alone okay but uh, i make that very emphatic let's let's deal with uh, where it's going to have an impact okay there's an old saying where where there's no sense there's no feeling okay <laughs> so don't even waste your time okay well, well well we'll see mr t with his chains on hopefully he'll be at the meeting at the 21st because i'm sure a lot of your listeners will be there i'm going okay. to sure try to make it okay depend on it thanks a lot bye <laughs> Also, we'll be giving out bumper stickers this Sunday at Tradewinds Park in Coconut Creek, a benefit for the Broward Humane Society. And uh, maybe I'll even take some along to Gulfstream Park on oh, Sunday. Yeah. How do you like that? Uh -huh. uh, by the way, that's uh, Tradewinds Park in Coconut Creek, Sample Road in the Florida Turnpike this Sunday. Broward's Best Friends Classic and Antique Car Show. Excellent. Mm. Okay, 20 past noon at WIOD. We have an open line and date. If you move it up too late, they didn't move quickly enough. Damn. Darn. <laughs> Maybe it's the Hallandale Digest calling in to get the story behind the story. <laughs> the Alan Courtney program. <laughs> Boy, you talk about slow. That, that, now, that story epitomizes everything that's wrong with Hallandale. I mean, that, in a nutshell, that's it. That sums it all up. Yeah. Oh, yeah? There's something in the paper today? Wow. That's and true. was there really some guy there yesterday? Wow. I didn't embellish. Oh, that's Swear great. to God. <laughs> okay, well, let's uh, move on to Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is Ron. I'm uh, 22 years old. I've I grown up in Hallandale. Wow. My, my sister... <laughs> Good luck to you, Ron. My sister, uh, her name is Karen. She writes for the Hallandale Digest. Uh-huh. Yes, and uh, we videotaped... She doesn't live in Hallandale. She lives in Davie. But we videotaped the commission meeting yesterday for her. And, really? And I was over there last Woo! night when she was watching it, and she was writing her paper on it. Uh -huh. did you Did you happen to see that? No. Well, uh, at one point when... Uh, when that man was was playing the cassette tape of some of your material, mm -hmm. they played that song, you know, Hallandale. Wasting Away in Hallandale? Wasting Away in Hallandale. Oh, yeah, very right. provocative song, yeah. Okay, now they had the camera on him as he was playing it, and then when one, one part came, you heard like a, a snicker, and they moved the videotape up real quick, and here is one of the men on the commission panel laughing mm -hmm. with his hand in front of his face, and right. then when he saw the camera was right. on yeah. <laughs> Now listen, have you got that tape? Yeah, I sure do. We need that tape desperately, okay? Okay. And we'll be more than happy to give it back to you so we can make a copy. But if you can arrange to get it by here anyway, we would uh, be very indebted to you. Okay. Um, she is, she wrote a, uh, an article on it. I don't know if it's going to be in the next one coming out or not. But uh, Well, sometime in the next couple of months. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, if you just tell me where to bring it by, I'll... Drop it off. Okay, hold on a second. I'll put you on hold, and uh, Nick will give you all the info. Okay, and we appreciate it very okay, much. Sure hold thing. on. Incredible. So we'll actually be able to view this thing. That's it's exactly what we're looking for. Now we won't have to pay to subpoena the minutes or whatever. Mm, yeah. yeah, that's Wonderful. great. Well, this is tremendous. But, I mean, yeah. seeing it, of course, will have all that much more impact. Sure. Especially the scene with the one commissioner just in hysterics <laughs> over that song. Yeah, we yeah can... who the hell are you guys kidding over there, huh? <laughs> Boy, talk about having a little post-pubescent uh, fun. That's what they're doing over there. Now, can we take parts of this tape out of context and, like, edit them together yeah. and stuff? Oh, good. yeah. Great. In fact, we can show Sonny speaking, and then we'll put the part where the other commissioner is laughing hysterically <laughs> right after it. <laughs> and it'll fit in real great. 23 afternoon at WIOD. Think about 1227 at WIOD. And, uh, yeah, we were just talking during the break about uh, the fact that these elected officials in Hallandale are going to have to face the public again soon. I'm not sure when. Somebody will call in and tell us when Sonny and his crew of uh, commissioners are up for re-election. And uh, maybe I'll move to Hallandale. <laughs> <laughs> and run for don't, mayor. Don't go. <laughs> Now, don't go crazy. Come on, don't go nuts. <laughs> don't have a Maybe I'll just get like a temporary residence. Well. <laughs> I have an aunt who lives in Hallandale, right on the A1A, in a beautiful condo. Maybe I'll move in with her. Or maybe I'll just move her out, and I'll move in there. It's a really great place, right on the ocean. Mm-hmm. 
And I can uh, say hi to Sonny every morning when I'm walking the dogs. <laughs> 27 past noon at WIOD, and let's go to Chucky in Miami. How you doing, Chucky? How you doing, Neil? Okay. Listen, man, don't let these people get to you. I know it's not, but... Uh, They're it's... not getting to me, I'll tell you that. If I was able to survive 19 months of abuse... Really? And now we're finally, thanks to our antagonist, we're in a position where we can really bring it all out in the open here because it's a major news story. Um, you know, I'm, it, I think it's great. Yeah, well, let me tell you, my grandparents and all lived in Hallandale, and I say lived... They moved out because they said, oh, those viejos cagalitrosos, which is old blue hairs. Yeah. Uh, they just couldn't stand <laughs> it. you say anymore. so, Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> they just couldn't stand it anymore, so now they're living next to me and Kendall. Oh, yeah. So well, that's, uh, that's an improvement. That's a step in the right direction. Yeah. They have to deal with the traffic now. Now they can move to Homestead and really have it made, you know. Yeah, out there with the uh, raccoons in Homestead. Yeah. Listen, when is this meeting going to be there, Neil? I want to I go. Tuesday, February 21st in Hallandale, and we'll get, we're going to get all the details. That's mm -hmm. two weeks from yesterday, so we've got plenty of time to put it together. We just had an offer from our friend Joe from Tastry Rotisserie <laughs> to cater our affair that we will have over there, uh, you know, provide some sweet and low and some great food. And, boy, what a turnout we would have, huh? That's good. I have to get off my diet just so that might even have day. something special for Sonny, too, over there. You know, we'll have Joe put a little something special together. <laughs> some waffles or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Neil. Well, listen, I'd like to call my boy Tata a douchebag anyway. Okay, Chucky. All right, See Neil. See you later. Hang in there, pal. Yeah, maybe some uh, x lax flavored halava or something like that would be good for the commissioners <laughs> over there. Huh? Mm -hmm. 29 past noon at WIOD. We have an open line in Dade, 751-9463, 751 W-I-O-D. It's just amazing that we're back to this all over again. It's like, as Wichner would say, it's like Desi Rue. Isn't it? I was thinking the same thing. So everyone should pick up a Herald or a Sun Sentinel Day, and this whole story's in there, of course. You, can you know, we have been it. remiss in doing something today and not doing it. We didn't give the number for the Hallandale City Commission. And again, we don't want anybody to be abusive or to harass anybody, but uh, no question about it, because the call on Steve's show yesterday made it very clear yeah. that no emergency calls go through that number of that switchboard. That They're all routed great. through Hollywood. So don't let anybody give you a song and a dance. But certainly since the city commission has injected itself into a situation that involves a radio station that's not even in the same county <laughs> and in an issue that is not in any way related to the city of Hallandale, then obviously we have a right to protest since it affects your right, all of you in South Florida within the sound of our signal, to listen to the programs. So you should give them a call and let them know that at 458-3251. 458-3251 is the number for the Hallandale City Commission. And you might want to get some information about that meeting on February 21st and find out the time and all the exact info. You can pass it on to us. We'll have our WIOD spies doing a little work for us while we're sitting in here having lunch in a few minutes, right? Yeah. Okay, here's a payphone in Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. Yeah, my... Okay, well, she sure picked the right guy, I'll tell you that. Uh, 1231 at WIOD, we have an open line. <laughs> See, I got my line on the air. He didn't get on, which yeah, is great. Yeah. Uh, we have an open line in Boca at 278. Even I like that one. Yeah, me uh, too. 278-9463, 278-WIOD. <laughs> Boy. I he's he's a guy, you know, he called you a couple of days ago, and I was on the floor because you gave him, it was, a, I don't remember what the response was, but he said he wanted to buy a dildo for his girlfriend and how big should it be or something like that. And you had a classic response, which I don't remember, but it was just, I was on the floor, it was tremendous. Same guy. Yeah. So he's obviously, in that general area, he's got some uh, problems. I think it was something that he should get a large one to compensate for the pea size <laughs> yeah. of the yeah. brain. Something yeah. like that. It was uh, classic. <laughs> Uh, Fort Lauderdale, hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? <laughs> Fine. I'm trying not to laugh really hard. Oh, you oh, got you to hear. Home, so you got to hear the whole you call. Got you got a little call. more uh, spice out of that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're lucky. Today's your lucky day. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, I'm your Guiding Light fan. Yeah. That's with, have you seen it lately? You're not going to believe it. No, I, I've been avoiding it as much oh, as possible because I'm so confused well, with Serena I, and uh, what's her Sonny. I don't know who's yeah, who. Well, see, I have to watch it for you. I mean, I just have to keep you up on the stuff, so it, I'm forcing myself to watch it. I feel like when I watch that show, I feel like Raymond in Rain Man. I keep asking who's on <laughs> first because I can't keep up with it. Well, you, you, have you seen the latest with Fletcher and Alexandra? No. That are becoming a couple now? Oh, They're no. On that Come island? on. They were cereal. kissing the other day. It's unbelievable. Woo. And the thing with Sonny's now coming out, and she's trapped with Reva in a burning house, and Will, and it's really <laughs> getting dumb. But I think they're bringing back Roger. Remember him from a long time ago? Yeah. Oh, I sure. Think that well, he died years ago. Yeah, well. <laughs> but that never stopped him yeah, from bringing anybody right. back before. <laughs> I think they're bringing him back. 
because they're showing... In fact, they ought to go into Hell and they'll get some new characters because there are a lot of people walking around there who died years ago. They could bring them on the show. Speaking of psychotic, um, Sonny and uh, Selena, that, that whole thing that's coming out with, with them, I think is, I hope, her exit. I hope. Yeah, that, she's that would be great. The show oh, I beg. I would, I would pay a lot of money for that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, this thing with Hallandale, I'm really, I'm really upset that, that they're doing this. Well, a lot of people terrible. in the audience ought to be upset because it affects your right to yeah. make your own free choices and are trying to hassle me and get me off the air, just like the Catholic Church has done twice and just like this other individual does in a never-ending vendetta. It's well, true. because uh, they just don't, they can't handle the truth. They I... have no sense of humor. They can't handle the truth. No. And they want this just to be their town where you can only say what they approve of. It's, uh, it's Like I said, it's like something out of Nazi Germany. I know. I didn't even know you were allowed through there without a border pass. Yeah. My God. But I think it's I think it's really terrible that they're trying this again. I mean, you've had this for so long. You've had these people that have been against you and and working up to yeah. And, doing ge these and guess things. what? And guess guess what? I'm still here. I the know. show is still top rated. We're making more money than ever before, and life goes on. I think it's city, one of the huh? best things of all is that you have just taken this ad adver adversity. And just run with it. I mean, they're giving you such great publicity by doing this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they did it two years in. ago. They did it two years ago, and they never learned their lesson, so more power to them. Yeah, well, just keep hanging in there and just keep doing what you're doing because I am one of your biggest fans, and I have been for many years, and I just think you're great. Okay. And I think you should have a talk show on TV. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah, I should have a talk show on uh, Hallandale Cable TV, huh? Hmm. Oh. That must have been what she meant. No, I wasn't talking about her. I was just oh. thinking out loud, you know, so I could talk directly to my fans at Hallandale. <laughs> Look at this. Somebody sent me an article here. This is from Model Magazine with yeah. an article about Jason Gedrick. Oh, boy. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> it's uh, time to tell you that uh, Valentine's Day is going to mean an extra... Thanks. Boy, that's good. Carmine, you're the you're just um, a miracle man is what you are. Yeah. He makes life worth living in this part of town in North Bay Village. Hmm. Yeah, we might have a crumb, a crumb or two for Nick left in here, too. <laughs> There's enough food for 100 people here. Just take your choice. Okay, here's a, a Broward call here. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yeah. Um, as you were given the number to the city of Houndale, I was calling, and I got right through, and the lady answered at the switchboard, and as I was mentioning Neil Rogers, she said, hold on, let me get you that department, and she connected me to the uh, city clerk, mm -hmm. who said that I asked her what exactly time the meeting starts on the 21st, and mm -hmm. she said, well, they usually start at 10. In the morning we'll run till Great, just in time for the start of our show. All right, and they can run up until 5 or 5.30. And I said, well, is it set then for February 21st? And she said, no, the agenda hasn't been set yet. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, well, something was in the paper concerning this, and it seems like it was already set for the 21st. Mm -hmm. And she suggested me to call back and ask for the city manager's desk. Mm -hmm. So you might want to give that number again because I didn't get to write it down on paper. And I know I'm going to call back and talk okay, to... Okay, the number is 458... 458... 3251. 3251, okay. I'm going to call back then to the city manager's desk and, and find out exactly because... Knowing these guys, they're going to turn around and cancel it and, you know, just... You know you know something? Give you the they can keep doing that as long as they want yeah. and we'll be there, okay? Right. Every day until they decide to have the meeting. I mean, they're only going to do it on a Tuesday because that's when they have their meetings. I see. And they can do it every Tuesday from now till hell freezes over. I see. Or they can drop the whole silly thing and apologize for it and go on with the important business like they should be doing exactly. and stop trying to mess around with my life. Exactly. Also, uh, these uh, commissioner meetings are um, televised on Selkirk Cable for yeah. those people who live in Howell. Oh, that's correct. So they can watch it. Excellent. Well, from now on, we'll have people uh, busily taping while they're on. Yeah, and I just want to say one thing to my lazy brother, Randy. He's at home. He's, he's not even working here, and I just got to say hello to him. Okay. So long, Neil. Is he a douchebag, sir? No, he's just a lazy bum. Okay. <laughs> okay, See bye. See you later. Thanks. 1243 at WIOD, another one of our spies there, a little info. We have an open line in Broward, 524 Nine four six three five two four W I O D. Boy, is this good, huh? I'm having a great time. What is that? Is that a calzone? Uh huh. It's really delicious. <clears throat> Never had one of Flora's. Oh, everything they got is yeah. just tremendous. Best in the. I'll tell you one thing. We sure get treated well. You know what? We sure do. Between Pizza Loft. We're talking about the people who bring food over here, and Joe from Taft Street, and considering you're and such Boone a Boone from Siam's Dom, you're such a bad guy. I just yeah. can't understand it. <laughs> and the stuff from the Armadillo Cafe. Oh God, I just think about that, and I go nuts. Just, I don't want to leave anybody out, but there just have been so many of them. 
And our old friend Red, who used to bring all those great pizzas by in the other joint. Oh, yeah. From West Palm pizza. Beach, hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, this is Russ from West Palm Beach. I'm on vacation. I'm not a senior citizen. Uh, I enjoy your show very much, you know, and agree completely with the free speech. A few, about an hour ago, you had a gal on that was, you know, going in heavily into the Jewish people or something in the supermarkets. And, you know, indicting everyone, which I didn't think was right, and you that, cautioned her against it. Yep, that's but right. But tell me this. A couple of weeks ago, you made what I thought was kind of a sweeping generalization when you said, well, you were doing a commentary, some priest molested a couple of boys, and you said, well, have you ever met a priest that doesn't molest small oh, boys? No, no, I didn't say that at all, sir. Well, I said, that sir, effect. sir. You want yeah. to have a conversation? Because I don't like when people put words in my mouth. Well, you have That's a the joke. tapes. I don't. Sir, yeah. sir, it's a joke that I use on the air. I've used it for years. I says, if anybody ever met a straight priest, call him. That's a joke. Now, if you don't know the difference between a joke and an obvious ethnic slur, well, then maybe we need to give you some instruction. You're authoritarian to people, and they take it as a sweeping indictment of the whole priesthood. No, sir, they don't, because people listen to this show know that it's a, a comedy and entertainment show, okay? Yeah. Okay. But if you want to be offended by it, more power to you, okay? Okay, good enough. Okay, right. bye. 1245 at WIOD, we have an open line in Palm Beach, 655 WIOD. There's a perfect example of what I'm talking about, people that hear what they want to hear. Oh, yeah. Okay? That's for sure. You notice he started out by putting words in my mouth, just like somebody else we all know and love around here, putting words in my mouth, twisting and manipulating my intent, uh, alleging that I said that, you know, all priests are child molesters. Incredible. And then by the end of the call, okay, all right, because he's got nothing to back it up with because he knows he's wrong. And he knows that isn't what I said and isn't what I intended. Fort Lauderdale, hello. Yeah. Yeah. What? You want to speak to us or you're just going to play games? What's up? Uh, Miami, hello. Hi. Hi. I've been waiting for so long, the phone stuck to my well, we had a lot of we had a lot of intelligentsia ahead of you like these last two callers. These Mer this is Myrna. Okay, Myrna. How you doing? Okay. I haven't spoken to you in such a long time. Well, I'll be darned, Myrna. And I can't believe that someone just mentioned about the I-95. <laughs> yeah, it's your favorite. This is Myrna from Steve's, isn't it? Right. Yeah, remember, I'll be damned. Remember I you from I you remember me as soon as I said my name. Someone just came in the other day and remembered that... You know, I always speak with you, and they mm -hmm. mentioned your name, and I Great. said, here I am. Well, govern yourself accordingly, Myrna. <laughs> he used to send us over wonderful pizzas at INZ. Boy, those were the days. I know, but I haven't heard from you, and I knew you were on a diet, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I didn't know how you made out. I went up north for a while. And, well, I uh, lost 31 pounds so far, Myrna, and I'm still, um, still doing fine. I'm right. kind of in limbo at the moment. You dynamite. Yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> good. Okay, have a good one, Neil. You too, Myrna. It's good Take hearing care. from you. Bye. Bye-bye. 1247 at WIOD, and we have an open line in Dade. No, we don't. It's ringing already. The open line is in Palm Beach, of course. 655-9463. 655-WIOD. Hmm. You know, one of the guys, one of these pseudo-intellectuals who called Steve yesterday, and these are the guys who don't have the guts to call, you know, speak to me face-to-face because -face right. they know that I'm not going to sit and take their abuse. But he's saying, well, Neil deserves this because, you know, he's done this and he's done that. Let me tell you something, okay? No matter how much you dislike anybody on the air, no matter how much you disagree with what they say, no matter how much you despise them personally or what you think of them personally, the bottom line is nobody deserves to be harassed, to be threatened, to have all of their colleagues and friends harassed and irritated and threatened. Nobody, you know, nobody in this country should have to live like that. And that's been going on for 19 months now. So again, in your own minds, even those who despise me with a passion or dislike the show or whatever, wherever they're coming from, going to have to separate your personal dislike from what we ought to be able to do in a free country, okay? And that's unfortunately what they can't do in Hallandale. They hate me with a passion. I made them look like a bunch of fools two years ago, which, believe me, was not difficult at all. It was easy pickings. And now it's like, well, here's our chance for a vendetta. We're going to get even. Let's pass another resolution. Let's interfere with the station and with Neil. And with, you know. And if you think we're just going to keep sitting back and taking it lying down, you're, you're wrong. You're wrong. And that also goes for the instigator involved in all of this, too, who thinks that he can continue operating in the dark without any spotlight shining on what he's doing, without anybody exposing this malicious hate campaign that's been going on. It's all over, pal. The party's over. And the worm has turned. 
And now that all the uh, investigations of me and the attacks against me, now let's turn it around a little bit and find out where this individual's coming from and what he's all about, okay? All right. What's this all about? What are the real motivations? Who are the other people who are directly or indirectly involved in this? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's start looking, uh, you know, from the other viewpoint. 1249, it's 11 till 1 at WIOD, and uh, the Sports Channel has got it all, man. I'll give you an example of the kind of great events you'll miss if you don't have the Sports Channel on your cable tonight. It's 1253 at WIOD, right in the middle of lunch, in case you wondered. And um, they're doing some exciting things over here in the room next door. So if it sounds like the whole world is vibrating, you'll understand. They're just doing a little, little technical work there, remodeling, reshuffling. Fort Lauderdale, hello. Uncle Neil. Yeah. I have a great Hallandale story for you I think you'll enjoy. Okay. My mom used to own a travel agency down on Hallandale Beach Boulevard right near Gulfstream. Mm hmm So in her office, she used to have a water cooler, and she used to have a coffee pot there. So, you know, these people from Hallandale, once in a while, you know, they'd look in the window. They'd see the water cooler and the coffee pot, and, you know, they'd come in, and they'd take their coffee, their water, whatever. And my mom, you know, she's kind of easy going. She never said anything. And, you know, it was maybe like two, three people a day. And she used to keep a box of um, non-dairy creamer, a box of sugar, and a box of sweet and low. Uh-oh. And she couldn't understand why she was going through a box of sweet and low every week. <laughs> <laughs> so what had happened, I guess they started telling their friends about it. Oh, and it was getting yeah. more and more people. So one day I was in there, and I had to drop something off to my mom, and this old man walks in, he was probably about 140, he comes shuffling in the door, and he has an empty one-gallon milk container. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at him, and I say to myself, I can't believe what I'm seeing, what this guy is going to do. <laughs> he walks over to the water cooler and starts filling up this empty milk gallon. And I walk over to him, I said, excuse me, sir. But this is not a public water fountain. The guy totally ignores me. He keeps filling up the water. <laughs> I grab him by the arm. I calmly escort him out the door. I grab the water container from him, and I throw it halfway down Hallandale Beach Boulevard. The guy gets all excited. He calls the police. Oh, God. <laughs> the police come to the office. I told the cop the story. The cop just laughed, shrugged it off, and he left. And that's typical Hallandale for you. Yep, that's it in a nutshell. You got it. I just thought I'd share that with you, and uh, I think you're the best, so hang in there and don't worry about nothing. Okay, we're not worried. Believe me, we're having a great lunch. Hang in there, Neil. See you later. Bye. Great, thanks. All right. Okay, of course, because we are having lunch, it means a uh, little music can't hurt, right? Soothe the savage beast, <laughs> including Sonny and RJ and all our good friends over in the city of choice. Coming up cheesecake. Making the knees shake All of the old folks up at the mall They're checking the CDs No, they never say please Just waiting for the early bird special to come Searching for the false teeth they left in a glass And how dare they claim that there's a dark host to blame But they know it's their own damn fault Shoving in line To get the early bird on time They're pushing just as hard as they can And once they are seated They get overheated And start stuffing rolls and sweet and low in their bed. Say that it's a bowl of prunes 
lose a day But for some And and I mind the blues The old folks don't know the reason Why nothing is pleasing The muscles ache and their teeth just don't fit What does it matter When they call up Neil and Chatter I hate you Neil and never listen to your show They're wasting away again in good old holiday Just a box of metal music and a radio Now they claim that it's a dark horse to blame But Neil knows They can't wait for his show And how dare they claim that it's a dark horse to blame But Neil knows They just can't wait What timing, boy. I tell you, that's the end of the hour, and we're right up on the news. Fantastic. We're having a little uninterrupted lunch here, a little feast from Flores. April Wortham's got the 1 o'clock WYOD news. We'll come back at 105. Steve from 2 to 6, Sports Talk tonight, as always, 605. WIOD in Broward or 655 and 278 WIOD in the Palm Beaches. Other areas may call collect. The opinions expressed by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily those of the station. Now, here's Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Cheryl, Cheryl, eat, please, eat. Okay, 106. I'm sorry I stepped on Scott a little bit there, but, uh, you know, Cheryl ran out of here, and I just wanted to let everybody know she's eating up a storm. Come on, April. We got all kinds of pizza here and spaghetti. <laughs> it's like a gigantic don't food say orgy your in name. Here. Yeah? Everybody knows you, April. Heck, I don't want them to know me as a pig. <laughs> Are you trying to say that because we're eating on the air, we're pigs, April? No. April just said we're pigs, folks. <laughs> Let's get that on the 134 update, okay? Okay, we got a call in Lantana. We got to get right to it because you know we don't get too many from Lantana. Hello. You get plenty from Lantana. Come we, on. We don't get much. We get the Enquirer from Lantana. Okay, Neil. Uh, That's enough for me. <laughs> I heard the show yesterday, and Steve too, and he did a great job, by the way. Yes, he did. Yeah, he he did, did really. But I lived in Broward County for 16 years. In the last 10, I owned my own house mm-hmm. in a what they call a transition neighborhood, which was originally built for retirement communities. And then the young people start moving. In. Oh no! Uh-huh. Oh my you, God! You remember when uh, Channel Fifty One had the uh, adult movies? Yeah, on TV. On TV, that's right. I didn't even get it. We had <laughs> petitioners, these groups, little groups of old people mm-hmm. coming around with pet- petitions to try to get. I mean, let me, I want to tell you something about those people. Those are the same ones who used to sit in front of the set and tilt their heads sideways so they could see between, so they could see between the squiggly lines, okay? Believe me. They came to my house with a petition. Mm-hmm. I didn't have it, right? And they, you know, would you sign this petition? I said, for what? They're showing adult movies. Oh, yeah. And I said, well, yeah, you know, I don't get them. Why would I sign? But they wanted me to sign a petition for something I didn't get. So somebody that might want it couldn't get it. Mm-hmm. Incredible. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that was something you had to pay for. Yeah. Specifically. To, you, had to make a, you had to pay for well, it. Don't confuse them with the facts, okay? Yeah. they got nothing better to do than to try to make everybody else as miserable as they are. Well, listen, I wish you guys the best, and I'm 39 years old, and I guess I'm in your demographics, but I love your show, listen to you every day, and I'm homesick today, and I'm still listening. Okay, we appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Feel better. Thanks a lot. 108 at WIOD. An open line in Lantana, 655-WYOD. Get that off of there. It's disgusting. <laughs> Turn it up a little louder, Gertrude. 
Are you people listening again? Boy, you can't turn it off. Yeah, you? I know. They cannot turn it off. And just like I said, those it reminds me of the women at, uh, what was that, MacArthur Beach up in Palm Beach when I was there. And they had the big to-do because they used to be the nude beach. Yeah. And there were these big, tall condos like about a half a mile up the beach. And the old women there started a big simus about the nude beach, and they finally got it um, illegal to be nude there because they used to stand on their chairs with their binoculars. <laughs> Look at that! It's disgusting! Look what they're doing out there! <laughs> That's them. And every once in a while, they'd fall off the chair, you know, and uh, <laughs> then they would want to sue MacArthur for the, uh, you know, all kinds of insanity. That's it. Okay, here is uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hi, Neil. Hi. Got a Houndale update for you. Okay. Uh, it's going on the agenda on Thursday... Uh, February 16th, and you, mean, you can pick up a copy at the city clerk's office. You mean they meet on Thursdays also? Well, that's when it's going on the agenda. That's when they make up the agenda for the Oh, Tuesday I see, meeting. for the 21st. Right. And you can get a copy of it if you want. Uh, well, that'll give us five full days to uh, make plans. And for some unknown reason, they want to know what your name is when you're calling, too, because I didn't give it to them. Really? I'll well, want... just tell them why she put it. Well, I don't be hassled by Mr. T. Yeah. Hey, this is better than the soap operas today. That is correct. Great. Thanks for the info. We'll be there. Okay. Thank you. Nine minutes after one at WIO. They probably have to bring my bodyguard there, too. <laughs> Depend on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just reading a little note. I mentioned before, if you want to write letters of support and you're just... Fed yeah. up with all this crap and this yeah. attempt to harass and suppress and um, censor, then write to uh, Mike Disney, our general manager, expressing your support. Because, it, you know, it's nice to get a file of living and breathing people. And just send to Mike Disney, general manager, WIOD, Miami, 33141. That's Mike Disney, as in Walt, you know, same kind of clown. <laughs> uh, WIOD, Miami, 33141. There's some spaghetti in there, by the way, Rich, just in case. Uh, that Rich just dropped by. He just happened to be in the neighborhood when he heard that Flores brought 400 pounds of food. And there's a calzone in there, I think. I had one of those. It's incredible. Oh, there was sauce here for the calzone. You didn't even open it. None necessary. Mm. And there's some cannolis. Oh, Richard boy. the Castellanos just left. He said, don't forget the cannoli. <laughs> Here's a mobile in Boynton Beach. Hello. I think. Are they gone? No, no, no. This is Boynton Beach at a payphone. Oh, it says in a car. Well, now you're nitpicking. A well, car, payphone, portable phone. Yeah, I'm a truck driver, and uh, I run a route all the way up to Jupiter every day from Fort Lauderdale. Uh-huh. And i got to tell you, I listen to you every day, Neil, and I can't believe what these old farts are trying to do over in Hallandale. I really think it's a pity that they don't have better things to do with their time than to pick on a radio talk show host who most of South Florida really enjoys. Yeah, it's pretty childish, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I also would like to say, you know, I'm a 27-year-old heterosexual male, and I identify with you completely. I have no problems with uh, any of these allegations that they make against you. And by the way, it's really none of their business what you do with your life. Exactly. Exactly. You know, just like somebody sent me a picture of Jason Gedrick here in his article about uh, hot properties. <laughs> and i got to tell you, this picture is fine in my book, okay? And uh, if there's anybody out there who doesn't like that and thinks that all gay people are going to cower in a closet and be submissive and, and continue taking abuse from a handful of, of fanatics, they're wrong, baby, because it ain't going to happen. Yeah, you're right. And uh, I'd like to have one other thing also. I, um, this morning when I was driving my car to work, I have FM in my car. I don't in the truck, but I have FM in the car. And uh, apparently Zeta really misses you a lot because they're playing a lot of your stuff and they're using a lot of your, uh, your phrases. Well, I have one thing to say to them, okay? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> well, Have a great day. Good, Neil. I appreciate it. Well, I just wanted to call and give you my support and tell you that I'm behind you 100%, and I'm sure most of South Florida is. Thanks, Amelia. Bye-bye. Bye. Twelve minutes after one at WIOD. And, of course, it, you know, it figures that most of the people who are listening now love the show and enjoy this show and Steve and what we do on the station. Most. Which is why... What? Most. And there are a few masochists out sure. there who hate it, but they realize that without the show, they'd have totally, you know, empty lives, have nothing to do. And it's just a very small handful. That's the real shame here, and the real crime is that we got a handful of fanatics, and I mean just a tiny handful of people who want to deprive you of your choice of what you want to listen to, who want to dictate to us what we can do, what we can say, what we can talk about, where we can work, and it's a lot of crap. It's, it's fascism at its worst, okay? 
Moving right along. I bet you they love this sponsor, too. There's still time to win your Valentine's heart and soul and more. Stop into Patty's Place, only sexy things for your someone special. And Patty, by the way, who's a... Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610, WIOD. 115, right on the nose at WIOD. Steve will be along, 2 to 6, I assume, with open phones today. Oh, yeah. Good guess. And uh, <laughs> let's go to Miami. Hello. Hello, Mr. Rogers. Yes, sir. This is Patrick J. Lyons with the CIF organization. Uh, we're recommending that until this crisis is resolved, the city of Hallandale be placed under martial law with a 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. curfew and media blackout. <laughs> <laughs> Good thinking, pal. Thank you. You got our support. <laughs> our serious, serious support. We have an open line in Dade, 751-WIOD, and uh, Palm Beach. Hey, Palm Beach is blank. How do you like that? Is that a shocker to you? Like I said, they could be dropping neutron bombs oh, yeah. in the middle of Lake Worth and Palm Beach. Would still be open. 655-WIOD. 655-9463. Miami, hello. Hello. How are you? Okay. Hey, uh, let me tell you, uh, ever since yesterday, I've just, just really, really been uh, flabbergasted by what's happened. I think the word is apoplectic. Well, all right. Apoplectic. All right. I'll 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 drink to that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not surprised there's nobody in Palm Beach today, by the way. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if there was nobody in Hallandale today. Uh I want you to know I'm going to the meeting on the Tuesday. If you need a bodyguard, I'm available. I weigh about 300 pounds. Okay. Okay? And uh, also, I think that maybe the people in Hallandale, what they should do is uh, go with the media blackout from 10 to 2. What they should do is contact WGN Chicago and get Wally Phillips to broadcast to them. Yeah, there you go. That would be right up their alley. Yeah. And I don't know what would happen if Steve Dahl and Gary Meyer ever got No, forget. Here. Don't even mention those names. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, you know, you're you are Wilbur Whitebread compared to them. When that, is that is correct. That no is correct. That's why this whole thing about community standards and about all the stuff that I allegedly do on the air, this show is like like white milk, okay, or vanilla pudding compared to Howard Stern, Steve Dahl, and dozens of other contemporary broadcasters all over this country in major markets. And, you know, the, the the bottom line is this is a Bush League town. That's why we have to go through this. Most any other place in the country, if I did this material on the air, there wouldn't be a whisper or a peep from anybody. Truly. You know, the funny thing is is that I get very angry sometimes at, at your agendas or, your you know, the way you act on the show. But that doesn't stop me from listening to you. You are entertaining. And that's why I listen. Okay, you know, I appreciate it. Just remember, take no prisoners. Okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> 117 at WIOD, and we have an opening in date. If you move real fast now, 751-9463, and uh, that's flashing. Boca, 278 WIOD, 278-9463. Maybe even Veggie will call in. Oh, now, come on. Be no, careful. It's not, no, it's just a joke. He called before with a message, and I just freaked out. Make that clear. Called to say that yesterday he didn't call to be on the air. He wanted a bumper sticker. Well... We're not giving out the bumper stickers yet, Veg, and I'm sure that uh, even though you want us to, you know, change our whole agenda for your personal convenience, when we're ready to uh, figure out a way to do it, we'll let you know. Don't joke about that. Maybe he'll... <laughs> Don't even joke. You can't joke with oh, me. Oh, boy. Excuse me for that sneeze on the air. Uh, what... <laughs> 118 at WIOD, and we got a mobile in Miami. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Okay. Hey, that was a good sneeze. Feel was... a lot better now, yeah. Yeah, it was a good combination sneeze, huh? Listen, uh, I think that on that meeting, you should bring uh, Brother Paul and all the homeless people that benefited from that $40,000 and see what they had to say against Well, this, this particular individual who's harassing me in this station even attempted to um, intimidate Fat Rich because he sent the tapes out. Now, here, keep in mind, here we raised almost $40,000 yep. for the homeless. They bought a van to transport these people to Jackson, get a medical treatment. And it was just one of the most positive things I think I've ever been involved in in my life. Oh. And the guy is trying to twist and manipulate and distort that whole effort, too. Absolutely. That, that'll give you an idea of just what lengths this individual will go to to try to create problems for me and anybody I know. Anybody who disagrees with his uh, warped view of the world. Absolutely. Here's someone who's doing some good for the community. You're not, you know, helping out uh, Texas, for goodness sake. You're doing yeah. it for the community. That's right. And he wants to put an end to it. Yep. I got a good blue here for you. Uh, about four months ago, I was in Atlanta. I was in a shopping center called Lenox Square, I think it is. I can't remember the name of it. And uh, I'm, I'm walking into the mall, and I see this one lady, an older lady in an in a old Cadillac, waiting for a parking space. Well, before she can pull in, here comes this young kid in a nice little uh, Fiat and pulls right in. He gets out of the car. She gets out and says, hey, I was waiting for that space. And he goes, well, I'm young and fast, so 
there you go. She gets back into the car, plows into his car. Oh, gee. Comes over and says, well, I'm old and rich, so go call the cops. Uh, and I said, that's the epitome of all yeah, these old people, yeah, you know? That, do you remember the, uh, it was Meg Green, it was her daughter, do you remember that? She <laughs> told us that story about oh, her yeah. daughter having uh -huh. her car keyed by oh. this old fart because she took a spot that, she didn't even see him there, and she went to the spot, and he claimed he had been there first and started a big stink, and he keyed the car when she went inside. Oh, boy. At Christmas time, which yeah, is... Yeah, at Christmas. Uh, really? A gesture of yeah. uh, good cheer and <laughs> South Florida spirit. Well, hang in there, Nier. I'm uh, right behind you. Okay, thanks a lot. So to speak. Yeah, we got it. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. <laughs> bye. Well, 20 at WIOD. We have an opening in date, so to speak, at 751-9463. Let's uh, take that Boca call. This could be interesting. A Howard listener. Hello. Uh, Neil. Yeah. Hi. I recently moved down from New York, and you were, you know, you were talking about uh, Howard Show in New York. The people down here would have a stroke. Let, let me tell you something. I've always said this, Howard, and, and I think Howard's hysterically funny on his good days. There's some days he's a little ponderous, but he can right. be tremendously funny. Right. But Howard wouldn't last five minutes in this no, market because would, this is such a parochial bush league town, and they'd be screaming and carrying on, bah, 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 you know, and they would do, run him out. They would run him out on a rail. He would do lesbian dilate one time, and <laughs> it would be all over. <laughs> Absolutely. They ought, to, they ought to send his video down here and run his video on cable. Yeah, there oh, you go. In, into Hallandale on uh, uh, Selkirk Cable in Hallandale. Absolutely. Well, keep it up, man. Thanks a lot. Right. 121 at WIOD <laughs> on your TAME station, 610 WIOD. That's your TAME station as opposed to the other talk station, which we call your LAME station. Anyway, we have an open line in Boca, 278-9463, 278-WIOD. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you understand that everybody who comes in and participate, what are you looking for? Food? <laughs> Something, Something you, you lost. lost. News copy. Isn't that incredible? There are a lot of ladies who come in here looking for something they lost, like their virginity, but they never found it again. Huh. I don't think he left it in here. No, it's not in here, April. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, 22 past 1 at WIOD. And I want to tell you about a great place for a great deal on a great car. A lot of greats in there, right? I didn't see U-I-O-D. Hello, I'm Sal. And I'm Harry. Here to tell you about a special place. Just a short little drive. From New York is the Pocono. Let's go. That's where I want to go. To get away from it all. Where is that? In the Poconos. Eat the filter fish. Love that stuff. Play shuffleboard if you wish. I got a nine. Go for Saturday brunch. Or pile the food on top of your dish. I hope it's kosher. In the Poconos. Sky Top and Buck Hill. Camelback and Bush Hill. Mount Ellie and Shawnee. There's even Mickey Rooney. I know. Split Rock and Cresco. Oobie, let's go poking in the Poconos. We'll have some lunch and then we'll see a show with Tony Orlando in the Poconos. Get a hot shake time. You pour the champagne. Sit by the pool and act like a schlub. Let's get the chicks. You can meet a nice girl. Over by the exercise club. Hey, Judy, over here. In the Poconos, Sky Top and Buck Hill, Camelback and Bush Hill, Mavelli and Shawnee. Don't forget Mickey Rooney. Split Rock and Cresco. Oh, we let's go poking in the Poconos. We'll have some lunch and then we'll see a show with Tony Orlando. In the Poconos. Let's go. Did you forget uh, your teeth this I time? Know, I got my teeth in a little okay. bag with the water in there for this. All right, try to calm down, everybody. 127 <laughs> at WIOD, like a bunch of little children in here fighting over lunch, okay? There's enough for everybody, okay? Yeah. In fact, the rich is drinking the sauce for the calzone. <laughs> Look at that. They brought like a gallon of sauce. Rich is drinking it right out of the container. Uh, Susan and Linda, you're wonderful folks, but not this week, okay? This is not going to be the magic week, all right? It just isn't. Just one of those things. Okay, let's go back to the calls. We do have an open line in Boca. If you move real fast now, like, kind of like they do in Hallandale at the Digest, 278-9463, 278-WIOD, Hollywood, hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah. yeah it's kind of hard to follow Saul and uh, Harry, you know. I know. Unless you go in reverse. Um, I don't know if you saw it, and I know you don't get the Herald, but in Sunday's Herald, um, Rosenberg. Sonny. Uh, yeah wrote a letter to the Herald praising the Hollywood City Commission and their Gestapo uh, code enforcement for going out to um, 
441? Because somebody had more than two American flags. Turns out that's a violation of city ordinance. And oh, yeah. That, that's another one of those really <laughs> impotent things that people like Sonny Rosenberg get involved in. Yeah, and then, you know, that, that's the sad part. When you got a bunch of these condo commando types and they're in positions like mayor and city commissioner, all you get is the same kind of thing you get in the condos. You know, they're worrying about all nitpicky things, and, and the big things, the real problems, are way beyond their scope to deal with. See, that's what they cater to. They cater to the old people who live in the condos that, you know, they get more votes per square mile than the uh, people that are yeah. actually living and breathing. That's uh, right. Rosenberg actually said he actually said in his letter to the Herald that he went from county line all the way up to Fort Lauderdale and counted the amount of places that had more than uh, two American places. Oh, yeah, I'm glad that he's got a rich full life also and spends his time. No wonder he and our good friend, uh, you know, have so much in common. They've got rich full lives and have got so much spare time to do all these very Im important investigations. Thing is, if he got over ten, I wonder if he took off his shoes to count. <laughs> good point. Yeah, excellent question. We'll have to check it out. This is true. Okay, Neil, hey, good luck, man. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. 129 at WIOD. We have an opening in Broward. 524 Nine four six three five two four W I O D. We could be really having a good time today, but I, I guess we're having a reasonably good time under the circumstances. But this is—it's ponderous, man. Oh, when are yeah. they ever going to learn that it's just a tremendous waste of time and a lot of money and a lot of hassle, and it just ain't going to happen? Because I'm not going anywhere. Okay, it just isn't going to happen, Sonny and others. So you're going to have to reach over. I know it takes a lot of energy and turn the dial. Oh no! And you can be sure that those. Geriatric old farts in Hallandale on the city commission. They're all listening right oh, now, yeah. and they're all just sucking it right up. That's right. Uh, Boker, hello. Yeah, Neil. Yeah. This is one of your geriatric listeners calling from Boker. Bad accent, pal. At this time. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say that I think that uh, you owe, you know, this Rosenbaum, Sonny, a little little something, you know, because he's taking care of your Arbitron ratings. This yeah. is a big rating promotion. Oh, oh yeah. Well, evidently, listen, more power to him. It is a pretty bad accent. This is Tanner. I just wanted to call and say hello. Tanner! What's up, Neil? What a terrible accent for a radio pro like Tanner. By the way, there's some pretty filthy stuff you're doing, too, pal. We've got to do something about it. <laughs> Cut the crap, Tanner. You're next. Who's going to buy a big ad that says filth and put the frequency? Uh, the Dania City Commission is meeting about you. Oh, they heard about your antique attack the other day, and they're pretty PO'd about it. <laughs> How come we haven't heard from you in a dog's age, Bill? Well, I, you know, I have to drive to camp that day, and it only, you know, has FM radio. Some yeah. of us have AM radio. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm out working, but I'm subjecting myself to taxual abuse today, you know. Good. And so uh, I'm out listening, and uh, you guys are uh, raising hell as always. I saw that article in the paper. How ridiculous. Yeah, isn't that incredible? they got nothing better to do over there. They're going to uh, try to get me off the air in Hallandale, okay? <laughs> they should they should live so long, you pardon the expression. Maybe the engineers could rig up something to go directional to avoid Hallandale. Yeah, we're going to try to work it and create a <laughs> null in our signal so that we, like, there's a big lobe. I don't know if I can say that or not, but, like, a big lobe right around Hallandale, and we can avoid it at all costs. Wouldn't that be great? No, I think you should do a promotion, like, you know, maybe give away Sweet and low with your name on the back of it, your picture. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what a guy. You guys carry on. You're fun to listen to. Okay, clean up your act, Bill. I won't. Bye. <laughs> Bill Tanner. Amazing. What? Oh, great to hear from him. 131 at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward if you move real fast. 524-9463. 524-WIOD. Look at this. Johnny Dolan's wandering Good around here, too. Lord. All the radio superstars <laughs> are showing up at the same time. God, can we handle the pressure, he asked. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's... Uh, I mean, it's one thing to hear from Tanner, but when Johnny D walks in the studio... Would you like something to eat, oh, Johnny? Oh, God. Don't ask him if he wants something to eat. Looks like he's having Rosemary's baby or something, <laughs> for crying out loud. Just to cut the crap. Leave him alone. Stop okay. spreading all this stuff around. Besides, <laughs> no, please, put your clothes back on, okay? Let me just look at my picture of Jason Gedrick and leave me alone in peace, will you? <laughs> That John. Anyway, if anybody wants to know where we get a lot of that uh, really sub Rosa material, Johnny D. That's right. That's right. Look right at him, man. There he is. He probably stole it all from I-95. <laughs> that was exciting yesterday when that guy called in and played that, that tape of Earl Wasn't the Squirrel it? on the show. That was good, yeah. Incredible, yeah. Well, it wasn't really Earl. It was a poor man. Earl it was Jr. Earl the Squirrel Jr. Yeah. <laughs> it was really good. Anyway, it's 132 at WIOD. The Boca line continues to be uh, vacant, just like uh, the community up there. 278. That'll be next. The Boca City Commission's going to go after our ass next, man. You bet. They're going to nail us in Boca. You betcha. Because they're pretty sick and tired of us picking on Boca. 278. 
Everyone's freezing in the station. Nine four six three. Are you freezing? No, it's I, very comfortable. I when we came in here. Sleeves. It was so warm and clammy. Yeah, I'm not well, very You know, their blood pressure is all pumped up today, and it's just uh, not working. Anyway, if you've ever been turned down for a loan, one thirty seven at W I O D. Everybody ready to collapse now? It looks like lunch is pretty well cleaned out. Yeah, pretty well too. <sighs> okay, let's uh, take a few of these calls here before we mosey along to the news at two, which is only what twenty two minutes away. Good. Not that I'm in a hurry or anything. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil. How's it going? Great. And Bird too. All right. So listen, it's been a great show. Yeah. And I, I guess I picked a bad time to go on vacation. Oh, no. Yeah. You? Oh, you're going to have to rearrange your plans. Yeah, There's going to be really... so much excitement going on next yeah. couple of weeks. I know. It screwed me up because I was going to leave fr Saturday. No, yeah. no, no. You're, then, get your priorities straight. Yesterday before the show. We now that the we... closet doors are all wide open, man, there's going to be a lot of excitement going on around here. Oh, boy. Well, i got to go on this vacation. There's just no way out of it. Okay. Now. Well, call in. Where are you going? Uh, we're going to go up to the mountains, uh, up in the Smoky Mountains. Oh, yeah. Well, there'll be phones around up there. Okay, well... Call us, call us collect. Call well, us collect. Listen, i gotta, I got to tell you a story, though, real quick. A uh, blue hair story? Yeah. You know that... You know that... I don't know if you want to admit this. You've been through Hallandale before, right? Now, on occasion, yeah. Since they put up that fence and decorated with, like... Oh, on the, on the uh, boulevard, yeah. Yeah, on the median. Mm -hmm. And you know how it's like a rickety rack fence? Yeah. And they decorated with some trees and stuff? I swear to God, about two weeks ago, I was driving through there, and there was an old blue hair guy with a cane... Bent down between the two, in the middle, climbing through, going to Albertsons. Oh, gee. Well, I don't know if it's Albertsons, but he was crossing the street. Yeah. From the diplomat, and I just roared. I beeped my horn and gave him a thumbs up. <laughs> you know? Oh. <laughs> but I, I had to call it in, and... Uh, well, even... you know, that Sonny's got such a sense of humor. You know, it's incredible. <laughs> I think it was Sonny. Yeah. Is it, now that you mentioned it. Well, listen, it was great. I'm out of material. I'm going on vacation. I'm going to miss all this. Well, you like, call us collective. There, we'll stick a little pin on the map or wherever. Okay? Well, I'm going to have to find a newsstand and pick up the papers. You know. Well, good luck to <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah. Pick up the uh, Hallandale Digest up there. You know, it, it goes nationwide. <laughs> Comes out on Thursday, right? Every week. Good luck to you, pal. Have a good you. time. Okay. All right. Take care. Twenty-one till two at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward. Five two four nine four six three. Uh, I have something I just discovered okay. that was sent to me by our good friend, R. Pactor. And this really? Is, this is from the New York Times. You don't mean chronic Pactor, do you? That's right. February 2nd, 89, out of the New York Times, Dateline, Spokane, Washington. Billy Tipton, a jazz musician, lived life as a man, appearing to have a wife, adopting three sons, but a secret was disclosed when he died. He was a woman. One of the musician's son, John Clark, said he had not learned the truth until January 25th, four days after Billy Tipton died at age 74. Now, they said he was a saxophonist and piano player, and he performed with the Jack T with Jack Teagarden, Russ Carlisle, and Scott Cameron bands. Then he formed the Billy Tipton Trio in the 50s, played nightclubs throughout the West. Uh, Dick O'Neill, who played drums with the trio for 10 years, recalled that some listeners would joke that Billy... With a baby face and a high singing voice, looked too feminine to be a man. <laughs> New York Times, kid. One forty at WIOD. Man, I tell you, you won't pick up this news on WOLD. I guarantee you that. Okay, there are state stations and all you old farts who just love this show. You know, you, you just don't get this kind of good information. Like that old douchebag that called up Steve yesterday and he said, "Well, you, you people uh, should be educating us. You have to uh, inform us. We don't have to do anything, sir. We do whatever the hell we want. And if people like it, fine. And if they don't like it, go away. And obviously, you like it because you're hanging on every word right now. Okay? Who the hell are you kidding?" So loosen up the hold on that enema bag and have a good life, okay? Okay, let's see what we have here, okay? Boy, this is a nice letter on the uh, facts. Flooding in here today. That's Excellent. great. Thanks, Rich, for that uh, story. That was great. Okay, let's uh, move right along here. we got a mobile in Broward. Hello. Hey, Neil, how are you? Great. I just want to tell you I support you 100%. I lost track of you when you switched uh, stations a little while ago, and I'm glad I found you again. You lost track? Why, pardon me? How did you lose track? Well, I didn't know where you moved to. That's all. So I started switching around the dial, and I never was the IOD before, and I picked you up again. I'm happy as a frog. That's Great. Right. Ernie. So I just want to give you a little bit of advice, okay? <laughs> in that if this state needed an enema, it would certainly get it in the Grand Canyon of Hallandale. That is correct. You That's where that? they would stick the uh, tube. You, you better believe it. <laughs> just good luck to you. And keep it up, okay? okay? Whatever you need, I think the people who are here are smart enough. Just remember I just one... came back from Denver. It was 21 below zero. Just remember one thing. You don't say keep it up in Hallandale. <laughs> just keep that in mind. 
let their heads thaw here, okay? Thanks a lot. Bye. 142 at WIOD, and we'll move along. Why do I keep saying that lately? I keep saying that over and over again. It's annoying. It's ponderous. I hadn't noticed. Well, I'm beginning to notice, and I'm getting sick and tired of it. Moving right along. <laughs> Miami, hello. Hi, Neil. How are you? Hi, Bert. This is Mercy from Kendall. Well, mercy. mercy, mercy. Hi there. My son was waiting to speak to you, but he had to go to school, and he left me in charge of the phone here. How old is your son? 72? Oh, he's old enough. Okay. Old uh, enough. Uh-oh. <laughs> anyway. What does I... that mean? Yeah. Well, I just meant that if I gave you his age, I would give away mine. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. So anyway, I thought I'd give you a call to let, let you know that we all back you up 150%. Great. That's good okay. enough for me. Oh, Even 140% would be pretty good. <laughs> also, uh, I wonder, um, I'm flying off to London next week. Yeah. I don't want to give you a call. How's that? Oh, yeah, sure. please. Can I do that? Oh, sure. by all means. In fact... If you get to meet the queen, <laughs> be sure and call us and let us know uh, how things are, you know. <laughs> or if you just run into any queen over there, give us a call. Yeah, boy George. Uh, yeah. You know. I will give you a call, I promise. We'll look forward. happen uh, Thursday or Friday next week. Excellent. Have okay. a good time. And good luck. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. 143 at WIOD. Our, uh, this show is so international. I wonder, for example, if the Vail, Colorado City Commission is holding a meeting even as we speak <laughs> to try to get me off the air because they're so upset we get calls from Vail. <laughs> I don't think there's any question. Of course they are. And I, be, I understand that the uh, federal government, I don't know what they call it over there, but the uh, board of uh, something, are they in Istanbul? <laughs> Is having a nervous breakdown about this show. I got a card from her, too, today, by the way. Did the lady you? who called the other day? Yeah. Miami, hello. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Neil. Yeah. How are you? How you doing? Okay. Yeah, how's Glenn? Just great. Yeah. Boy, my, is this a great call. My, my girlfriend smokes camel skin. Yeah, I know. And that's the same guy with the uh, dildo problem from before. <laughs> is it? Uh, Hollywood, hello, yeah. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Great. This is so unbelievable. I can't I can't even believe what's going on. I know. It's, you'd almost think we woke up and found we were in Nazi Germany or something. Well, yeah, very close to it. That's kind of what I, I was thinking when I read mm -hmm. this in the paper. That's a good picture of you in the paper, by the way. In the Herald, yeah. Yeah. Is must, it be an, must be an accident. Is it recent? Um, well, let me take a look at it. Yeah, I think so. Because you definitely lost the No, it's away. not recent. It's an old picture because I'm wearing those stupid headphones. It's oh. a very <laughs> ancient picture. Yeah, I think you can... Forget the crate for housebreak and the dog. Just cross the city line of Howendale. The dog should dump right there. Yeah, I, I think that's it. I think we're going to invite all the people from Plantation to take a morning, uh, you know, trip to Hallandale every morning. Or just save it up and, well, never mind. Um, yeah, there you go. I had a quick um, blue here for you that I think that they're going a little nuts with the um, green stamps. There's like a run on Publix for the green stamps. <laughs> oh, yeah, so to speak. I... <laughs> I was at the checkout, and I had a very big order, and I get a lot of green stamps, and I do save them. You know, I am saving up for, you know, to, to buy a car with my green stamps. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> this lady must have been working the aisles or whatever, you know, the, the checkout, and she asked me, pardon me, are you going to be using those? And I had a lot, and I, and I tore them in half, and I gave her half, and I kept half. And she's still standing there, and she says, what about the rest? And I said, what? She goes, are you going to be using those? And I said, well, yeah, I'm, I'm making a quilt <laughs> out of them. I, you know, what? And I said, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't believe it. She was mad because I didn't give her all my green Now, listen, stamps. you should have told her that you just needed one more book for your gold lame enema bag, and she would have understood. <laughs> she could have related to that. I was so upset. Anyway, well, maybe we can get Freeway and Spigot to show up on the 21st. Oh, that good idea. Yeah. Sock it to him, Neil. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Learned about... <laughs> That house doubt. Listen. Chances are. Hi. Hello. Water's warm, huh? I'll say. You uh, come here often? Pardon me? Have you been here before? No. First time. Oh. Uh, what's your name? Freeway. Freeway. That's nice. I'm Spigot. Pleased to meet you, Spigot. I'm here. <sighs> you, uh here to get uh, clean or what? Oh, uh, I don't know. And you uh, work around here? I'm a waiter, but actually I'm an actor, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's tough, isn't mm. it? You probably need to relax. Oh, I'll say, but you know, with everything that's in the news and all, it's just... Hey, tough. you can start relaxing right now, Freeway. I uh, brought something. Ooh. Uh, sheath. Mm -hmm. And Freeway, not just any sheath either. Look. <gasps> wow, gold lame. <laughs> Pretty 
Yankee <laughs> condom, huh? Mm. But here's the most important part, Freeway. Mm. The Protect label. Protect, huh? Aren't those endorsed? By the by... City Council of San Francisco? Absolutely. You know the Protect slogan, don't you? I sure do. Mm -hmm. Certified safe by, by the city, city by, by the bay. bay. <laughs> well, what do you say? Darn, look at that. I dropped the soap again. Oh. I'll get it. <laughs> you bet your life he will. And with confidence. Because Freeway and Spigot have condom sense. Don't let worry spoil those chance meetings in public showers. Always carry Protect. P-R-O-C-E-C-T. Keep my mind free as can be. P-R-O-C-E-C-T. Bend down with no apology. Don't doubt. Know what it's all about. The Protect Sheep. So they won't send you a wreath. Protect Condoms, a division of Black Flag House and Garden Pest Control Division, keeping situation safe since 1887. 148 at WIOD, we have a celebrity caller on the bat line. Hello. Hello, is this Neil? Yes, it is. Neil, this is Jim Gaster. Yeah, Jim. I understand there was uh, someone had sent a letter in reference and used my name. As your, your name and address, no less, yeah. My address as well? Yeah. What did that? I didn't hear the show yesterday. I was at work on that work. Well, they, they alleged in a letter, whoever wrote it, that I stiffed some uh, valley parking guy somewhere and that I parked in Fort Lauderdale. Right. And uh, that they had run a whole bunch of valley parking things at some of the better restaurants in town and what a cheapskate I am and how I parked my own car and I stiffed, which really uh, offended me because I'm probably one of the most generous tippers anywhere. And only a couple of times I can think of I've avoided valley parking because I didn't want people driving a particular car, you know. Is but this it, recent? This happened allegedly, according to them, mm -hmm. and I don't. It, it couldn't possibly have happened because I haven't been eating in restaurants for three months that I've been on this diet. Well, I've been out of that. I, that was what is true. Now I used to run parking concessions. Yeah, did you? Isn't that interesting? Years, but I've been out of it for five years. Yeah. Well, somebody must have known that. Somebody you know and love and uh, used your name, and um, you know. Could uh, you send a copy of that letter to me so I could? Uh, follow up on that? I don't. I threw it in a wastebasket. I don't have it. There isn't any. You don't know where it came from or what restaurant it could have possibly been. Mm -hmm. No, no. I, I have no idea because it just, uh, you know, it just had your name and address and the return address, and it was just uh, signed with your name. So there'd be nothing. Even if I did have it, I don't think there's much you could do with it. Do you recall the address that they used? No. It was on. Um, I don't want to give the exact address on the air, but it was Galt, the Galt, Galt Ocean Mile. Right. That's where I live. Yeah. Uh -huh. Over on the air now. Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh okay. I, I didn't know. I thought this was... Uh, uh, because I had a call on the on my machine when I got picked up my messages. From me? Well, from you and yeah. from someone else in the station. Then some woman called at 1 o'clock, 105, and, of course, was swearing on the, the tape. Oh, that's great. Which, now, and I had heard someone else mention to me that uh, my name was on there and, and my name is... You know, I'm in the real estate business. Yeah. I am not in the parking business at all. Right. And my name is important to me as far right. as the reputation. Well, I'm sure of that, and we apologize for any inconvenience, but again, somebody used your, you know, I had no way of knowing that, and very often when somebody writes us a letter and it appears to have a legitimate name and address, uh, we read, you know, read it on the air because once they write it to you, it's uh, open, you know, to the public. Oh, I'm sure I, I can appreciate that, but don't you have a research department that, that verifies to make sure? A research department? Or just somebody to verify that the letter is for real, not a, a hoax. As no, as well, we did case. call you. We did call you. That's why, because I wanted to discuss it with you and uh, left a message because you weren't there. So we were trying to verify it, but there was nobody there. All right. Well, uh, you need to, I'm at, I can give you the office number, like I said. In real no, no, don't give any numbers out because we're on the air and there's no, please don't give out any numbers. It's just that somebody, I wouldn't get too hysterical about it. I mean, you've cleared the air, you've made it obvious that you didn't write the letter and I wouldn't make more out of it than, uh, you know, somebody who's trying to do a prank on you. Okay. Okay? Well, as long as I, uh, like you said, I have cleared the air on that because I was not too happy when someone called and left a message and, and said this and I'm thinking, well, who could have, who could have uh, done anything like this? Yeah. Well, some nut out there, obviously. There's, you know, we got a bunch of them, uh, each one of us has got somebody out there, you know what I'm saying? Well, I can, I appreciate that. Okay, Jim. Well, thank you very much. Sorry for the inconvenience. Well, 
It's over and done with now, just as long as we have it cleared up. Okay. Right. Okay? Thanks for the call. Thank you, Neil. Bye. Bye. I'll be darned. 151 at WIOD. I want to tell you about Char Hut right now, where you're going to have it your way. Like a reflex reaction and a routine way of disarming somebody. You know, well, if you hate it so much, if you hate Neil and you can't stand him, whatever it is, you hate Steve King, why do you listen? But there's really... We're not really doing service to the question when we dismiss it as a cute uh, comeback or, uh, and a piece of repartee. There is a real question here. Because as you follow the development of this, and you'll probably, I don't know, for whatever reasons, uh, the people who hate Neil are less inclined to call on his show. Maybe they don't, they can't stand the heat or whatever. And I am willing to deal with these people at length. Uh, but... It is obvious there are a great many people out there, elderly, young, or whatever, that hate Neil's guts. But you can tell when they call in, they listen. They don't miss a minute of it. And what I want to ask you is, you know, we talk about the free marketplace. We talk about the idea that the if you, the, the true censorship in this business, you've got to get that vacuum. I don't want. Is that a vacuum running out there in the hallway? Or, I mean, what is going on out there? I feel like I'm in the middle of a cleaning day at the mall or something. Surely there's another time they can do that, like during sports talk. Is there any way we can handle it? I mean, if I've got to live with it, I'll live with it. I mean, I'm not going to walk off the air, but maybe anything we can do about it? Yes. Okay, good. Because it interferes with my train of thought. Where was I? See what I mean? What was I saying? I don't even remember what I was saying. Do you remember what I was saying? What was I saying? Nick's, Nick's going to bring me back to my, uh, the, the point before that stupid vacuum cleaner went on. Oh, why do you listen? Right. I knew there was something like that. Um, the free marketplace, this is a, free, this is a commercial radio station. Uh, this station is in business to make money. This station uh, makes its money by hiring people who hopefully will give it ratings. Uh, that's why they hired Neil Rogers, that's why they hired Mike Ranieri, that's why they hired Steve Kane, that's why they hired Sports Talk. That's the name of the game, as we say, in broadcasting. And the one thing that will get rid of Neil, or get rid of Steve, or get rid of Ranieri, or get rid of any show, eventually over a period of time, is when people don't listen to you. If you are boring, if you are tired, if you are, you know, I mean, and that's the name of the game. So if you don't like Neil... Don't listen. Don't write them down in the book. If you don't like me, don't listen. Don't write them down in the book. And if enough people are like that, if we no longer represent the community standards, if we no longer uh, interest you or entertain you, they'll get rid of us. Believe me, they're not going to pay us this kind of bucks if no one's listening. All right? But the strange thing is people don't do that. People will listen in. They hate Neil. They hate Steve. And instead of just switching, I said yesterday, I'm going to do it again. In fact, I think I'm going to do this disclaimer for a week. If you're into, uh, what was that, what was the word that guy used yesterday? He wanted to be educated. Or what was the word? Something like educated. Enlightened. Right, that's it. The enlightened man. He says, I want to be enlightened. I, let me, let me suggest, get a pencil and paper. If you want to be enlightened, there is a station in this market, W-O-L-D, my former station. Okay. It said, where is it on the dial? 790 or something like that. And you will get enlightened for as long as you can stay awake. You'll be enlightened, all right? They have Sandy Payton in the morning. They have Al Rantel on. As we speak, Al is droning on about some, probably the Contras or some boring thing, or probably talking about the pay raise three days after it's over, whatever, you know. And they will enlighten you. They will enlighten I'm not here to enlighten you. Neil is not here to enlighten you. And Mr. Ranieri is not here to enlighten you. We are here to make your drive home, Mike in the morning, make your drive to work, Neil in the afternoon to entertain you while you're at work. Uh, I'm here in the afternoons to entertain you as you're coming home from work. That's the name of the game, and we do a pretty good job of it. And you have to begin to wonder why somebody who hates this show or who hates Neil's show, notice I leave Mike out of that because nobody hates Mike, why they just don't hit the button, why they just don't go on and listen to another program. But they don't do that. They listen and they listen and they listen. And one of the things I want to explore today, and I don't want to do it in this kind of you know, this kind of coup de grace sense that we always do. You know, sorry, I hate Neil. Why do you listen? Bang. You know, it's like the moment of truth in bullfighting when you drive the sword into the heart. I don't want to do it in that. There's a real question here. I want to deal with this. I want to hear from people who hate Neil. I want to hear from people who hate me. And I want to know why you listen. I'm not going to attack you for it. And I'm not going to nail you to the wall with it. And I'm not going to say, uh-huh, I got you. I'm not going to do that. I genuinely want to know. 
And especially if you hate me, I want to know. I mean, I'm not going to sit here all day and listen to people, you know, fetch about Neil, but I'd love to hear, if you hate me, why do you listen? And give it some thought. I would bet you most of the people out there that hate me, that hate Neil, don't have never even thought about that. You know, you hate us, but you never really thought why you keep on listening. And if in the remaining three and a half hours of this program we can get some coherent answers to that, I think it's going to be very enlightening. Very enlightening. No point in giving out the numbers because all the lines are full and doubtless will remain so. But let's right now go to Nassau. Okay, let's go to Nassau. You're on WIOD. Thank you, Mr. Kane. Hey, how are you doing? I love you, love Neil, love everybody on the whole WIOD program. Uh, I find it interesting living here in the Bahamas <laughs> and the United States being such a great country and big and prosperous and high-tech that they still have people like that living in Hallandale. I thought of something sort of cutesy to say, I mean, we live in the Bermuda Triangle, but Rod Serling would say the people in Hollandale live in the Twilight Zone. Well, there are a couple things got to be made clear here. Number one, there are a lot of nice people in Hallandale, just like there are a lot of nice old people. I would say probably the vast majority of senior citizens, the vast majority of people that live in Hallandale are very decent, nice, and fine people. Who, most of them probably love these shows. And we have to resist the uh, temptation in our mind to do this stereotyping like this is all of Hallandale. I got calls from people in Hallandale yesterday that vo voiced tremendous support for this station and for Neil and, and for myself and, and uh, tremendous antagonism towards their commission there that is involved in this frivolous exercise. All right? uh, that's number one. Number two, Hallandale is only the... Hmm, the Hallandale situation is the pimple on the fanny <laughs> of the underlying problem here. Yeah. The underlying problem is an individual who is determined to take the radio shows that you love away from you. That's what we're dealing with here. And Hallandale is only a tool in this thing. Uh, I must say a, a tool that uh, this gentleman unfortunately used. Uh, because uh, in, in permitting it to become a full-blown news story, now we can deal with it in the open, which is where it has to be done with this thing. The solution to this problem is light, and uh, that's what we're going to shed on this. And I'm not, you'll notice I'm not in my usual worked-up rage over this. This is too serious to become involved. I I'm way beyond anger at this. This is a major thing, and it affects everybody in our listening audience. And I, I can only say that if you or uh, anybody else... Uh, out there feel, who feel as you do about the station, I would suggest that you write uh, and voice your support. Oh, just a couple of lines will do uh, to our general manager, Mike Disney, here at WIOD. And Nickel, hold on, i got the zip right here in front of me. One second. Are you interested? Do you have a pencil? I already wrote. The zip, okay, that's good. So for those who haven't, 33141, WIOD, Miami, Florida, 33141. And uh, we would appreciate your support. I really thank you for your call. Got Give my love to everyone down in uh, Nassau. Come on down. Okay, take bye -bye. care, man. Bye-bye. Let's go to... Uh, oh, we got to take a break. Okay, all right. Don't get... Jeez, Nick is... Did you have a bad night last night? We're going to take a short break for a news update, after which we'll be back. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show on 610 WIOD.